the regular season finale at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Today, New Mexico State looks to become bowl eligible as they play host to South Alabama. A lot to play for today. NM State is trying to end the nation's longest bull drought, which is 57 years long. And Larry Rose III needs just one rushing touchdown to tie the school record for rushing touchdowns in a career. Great to have you with us here this afternoon alongside former Aggie Danny Nee, Adam Young on hand. And I think it's safe to say today's game is the biggest game in Aggie football in 57 years. It could be a program changing day for the football program. Well, I think so, Adam. You know, many years we've stood here saying we're finally getting around the corner. The corner is there. We're getting there. I think tonight we are there. It's also senior day today, and the Aggies have an instrumental senior class that has been a big part of this program for four years. Yeah, many dynamic seniors have helped the Aggies in this uh, great year that we've had. You know, leading the charge, Larry Rose III, after four record-setting years, this is his last time playing in Aggie Memorial Stadium. What a great asset he's had been to the program. And who could forget the combo of Tyler Rogers and Jaleel Scott? That's just a great combo that has helped the Aggies throughout the year. And I go without, uh, we miss without mentioning Dalton Harrington, the leading tackler for the Aggies. And for South Alabama, it's the final collegiate game for safety Jeremy Reeves, who's turned himself into an NFL prospect. Yeah, NFL prospect, big playmaker. He leads the team in tackles and interceptions. He's had four games in a row where he's had 10 or more tackles. He looked to play the spoiler role today. Let's see if he can cut it, make it happen. Well, New Mexico State played without their starting quarterback, Tyler Rogers, a week ago. He was out with a shoulder injury. He should be back today, and that's a big boost for the offense. Yeah, the offense is going to need Tyler Rogers in order to make today work. And so we've heard from the other coaches that are going to attack Tyler Rogers. So Tyler's going to have his hands full today, but I think he's going to be ready to play. Bowl eligibility on the line today in Las Cruces as the Aggies host South Alabama. Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces. Adam Young alongside former Aggie Danny Nee. And this game is a long time coming. New Mexico State trying to collect bowl eligibility for the first time since 2002. The Aggies trying to make a bowl game for the first time since 1960. It's also senior day. A lot in this one here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. A good crowd today on a beautiful day for football. It is upper 60s, 69 degrees, no rain in the forecast, not too hot, not too cold, and it's a really good crowd so far here today. For a game in early December, the Yankees have not had a meaningful game, heck, in November in a while, and this one is in early December, and the Yankees a lot to play for today. South Alabama will not go to a bowl game this year, despite going to a bowl game in two of their previous three years. So New Mexico State trying to get back to a bowl game for the first time since 1960. Danny Nee, your keys to the game. Well, Adam, here's the way I see it. A lot of excitement, like you talked about. Last game for the seniors, bowling on the line. There's a lot of a lot of energy, but you got to harness that energy. So I think I look for them to start fast, score quick, work from a lead, stuff the run. You know, stuff the run, that's been our signature. We've had 11 guys flying through the ball all year long. That defense has been phenomenal. And I expect them to do the same today. So stuff the run, make South Alabama one-dimensional. And the last one, win special teams. You know, we're getting better in the special teams, Adam, but there, even last week we had two opportunities to score field goals, and we didn't do it. You can't have those and win today's game. So you have to win special teams. Aggies with a few injuries we'll tell you about as we go along. Jaden Wright, as you can see on the bike, is questionable today with a foot injury. But for the most part, head coach Doug Martin has a pretty healthy team today. And what a year it has been so far for the Aggies. Five and six. They have won two of three. Doug Martin has done a phenomenal job building this program to where it is now. The academics in a great place, and now the team is winning as well. And the hype around the town has been at an all-time high this week leading up to this game today. On the other sideline is Joey Jones, who's going to coach his final game at South Alabama today. He resigned on November 20th, but will coach today's game. So he's going to look for a new job when this game is done. And you have to think, Danny, the Jaguars are playing for Joey Jones today. I, I think there's no doubt about it. They're going to be energized. This is coach's last game. They want to make a, a you know, a good stance for their coach as he goes out. And that, that was good stuff, Adam. But, you know, the excitement, that, that carries you only so far. You still have to play four quarters. so But there is going to be excitement on their side for sure. New Mexico State will kick this one off to start in front of a good crowd today in early December in Las Cruces. Parker Davidson with the boots. 
And this one is returnable for Kawan Baker. He's across the 15 or the 20. Baker across the 30. And good field position early for the Jaguars in their sputtering offense, Danny, that got shut out two weeks ago in their most recent game. Yeah, that uh, Georgia Southern game was uh, was really just things just fell completely out of control for them. But what a start right now, right? You get a good return on that special teams. And that's what I was talking about. you got to be able to, to make a stance on special teams and win it. South Alabama had a bye week last week, two weeks ago, in a 52-0 loss against Georgia Southern. They only had 195 yards of total offense, and it was the first shutout in program history. 101 games, and we'll see two quarterbacks today. It's Cole Garvin, the Marshall transfer, who will start. A very depleted backfield as well for the South Alabama Jaguars. It is Trey Minter who starts at running back, and he handles the pitch. Minter across the 45-yard line. He spins down up to the 48. So we'll see if this South Alabama offense can get going again. They've struggled the last four games, only 13 points per game in the previous four. And they're trying to race to get to that corner right there. And we have very fast linebackers. You see Dalton Harrington. You see everyone getting there. So it's going to be hard to get that corner, and that's what they're trying to do, get out there. It'll be tough. And again, a four for Minter on the pitch. It's second down and six for the Jaguars in their opening series. Garvin to the air, and his pass is complete to Malik Stanley, the junior from Topeka, Kansas. You know, fast, fast passes. You know, they're going to look to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands as soon as he gets it because, you know, they know that the Aggies are going to come get him. They know that they're going to dial up a blitz, get a push from that front up there. So they're going to look to get rid of that ball really fast. It's a gain of three, so it's third and three for the Jaguars here early. They're just 30% on third down conversions this year. It's Minter to the right of the quarterback, Cole Garvin. Three receivers set for South Alabama across the middle, bobbled and incomplete, intended for Stanley again. And he should have caught that one, Danny. Yeah, you know, when we talked to the coaches, Adams, you remember they were saying, ah, you know, last week we had 10 drop balls, which is a lot. And this is exactly what it looked like. There was a first down right there to be had. Good defense, but he had the first down, but he just dropped it. And it hit him right, right in the bread basket there. So that brings out the punter, Corliss Waitman, who was busy in the last game for the Jaguars two weeks ago. He had nine punts, which was a season high. He's the best punter numbers-wise this year in the Sun Belt. Out of Milton, Florida, he's a junior, a left-footed punter. And he punts it away to the senior on senior day. Larry Rose, the third, who calls for a fair catch. And he'll take it at the nine-yard line. Well, the big question today is, what does South Alabama have to play for? The Aggies have everything to play for, Danny. And right. right. The Aggies, of course... If they win, they're bowl eligible. South Alabama, you just look at it as another game, probably. As another game, and they're spoiler. They're they're looking to say, you know what, since I can't be there, you can't either, and we're going to be the spoiler today. And I think that's what they play for. And their coach, like we talked about. Here's Tyler Rogers, who missed the last game and a half with a shoulder injury. The Aggies a little worried about him getting hit today, so keep a close eye on that. Doug Martin did say he could have started last week, but the Aggies... Try to hold them off as the ball jars loose. It is scooped up and as Rose the third down. That was Finesse Middleton. Larry Rose on the carry. And they're going to say he was down. Well, they closed that hole in a hurry, didn't they? As they just got a little uh, zone read there and got Rose the ball. And as he cut and up one. in there, look at the big hit he takes up in there. So big step up in there by linebacker and put the, put the hit to him. Rose does get one in the play. Rose the third in the backfield with Rodgers. Bunch set up top side of your screen. The Aggies with some trickery, breaking a tackle, getting loose is Jason Huntley, who's tripped up almost wow. in his own end zone. He gets out to the one-yard line. So I think they were ready for that. I think they're feeling like, you know what, we've seen a lot in the, uh, a lot of trick plays throughout this year for us, and so that wasn't going to get by us. Almost turned into a safety. Brings up third down to 19. Here's the guys to watch. Julio Scott and Larry Rose the third for the Yankees on offense. Two seniors and a couple of linebackers for the Jaguars. Bull Barge and Daryl Sanji. A couple of linebackers for South Alabama. Dangerous play here for the Yankees on a third down to 19. Rodgers in his own end zone as he drops back to pass. Rodgers underneath. It is caught by Larry Rose the third who is still on his feet and then he's pulled down at the 10 yard line. So the Yankees will have to punch on their opening series as well. Yeah, you know, uh, we talked about and the keys being being able to start fast, score quick. 
But when you come out here and you have a couple of plays that march you backwards, it's hard to be in a third and long situation and get on the board. That the series was not a very good one for the Aggies. They need to really get it going there and win that offensive line. It was a slow offensive day for the Aggies last Saturday in a 17-10 win against Idaho. It was the fewest points the Aggies allowed all year, but also one of their fewest offensive games all year as well. Low punt for Peyton Theisler. Takes a really friendly bounce for the Aggies, and this is going to turn out to be a boomer, Danny. Wow. It's going to roll all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Jacob Wanqua and a few others on the coverage there for the Aggies. Big boom for Peyton Theisler. A punt of 62 yards, a new season high for him. Well, turn in the fields, right? That's what you want from that punter, and so there it is. Turn the field. Jaguars offense, back on offense and after this. Back with you here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. New Mexico State trying to extend their season. Final game of the season, regardless of the result today for South Alabama. Jaguars offense back to work. This is not the roster they had when the season started, at least their depth chart. They're down to two healthy running backs. Their all-time leading rusher in program history, Xavier Johnson, is suspended for the year. He's been out for weeks now, and a much different-looking Jaguars offense now. Garvin still in for South Alabama. They go to the ground. It's Carlos Robinson on first down, and the Aggies sniff it out. Man, Terrell Hanks just came screaming in from the side there. This is the uh, attack defense. The speed of the defense really shows right here. So you see as soon as he had that ball off, Terrell just came screaming in there. Um, it's tough when they play flying to the ball like they do. It'll be tough for them to, to get going on offense. And Leon McQuaker coming off a big week for the Aggies a week ago. Garvin on second down and nine. Play action rolls out to his right. He's going deep. He has Jamarius Way, but he overthrows him by a few feet. That could have been a touchdown if Way hauls it in. Wow, he got behind him in a hurry there, didn't he? And he aired that ball out. He let it go. And so, man, that's that's a good throw there. It's just too far. Trey Mentor running back for the Jaguars. Sam Harris, a team high 41 catches this year. Cedric Wilcox, the Sun Belt. Defensive player of the week, and Dalton Harrington playing in his 48th career game today, his 33rd career starts on senior day. Three wide receivers, bottom side of your screen for South Alabama. It's Robinson, the senior in the backfield with the junior, Cole Garvin, who takes the snap on a third down and nine. Good pressure by the Yaggies. Completes the pass, though, to Jordan McRae. And McRae has the first down to the 40-yard line as he gets 10. Well, that was just a, a barely, barely on, on all. And barely got, missed the quarterback getting in the sack there, but he was able to deliver the ball. Barely be able to get there and knock the ball out of the hands from the receiver. Made a great catch right there and able to turn it around. We're all over it, but they were able to convert that to a first down. Now South Alabama will play two quarterbacks today. Both Garvin and Dallas Davis can really sling it. Both guys having pretty good years, and both guys have big arms. Minter back in the backfield with Garvin. On the first down and 10 from the 41-yard line. Garvin on a slant route to Jamari Asway, who leads the team in receiving yards this year, nearly 700. He's a main target for Cole Garvin. And, you know, he had good coverage on that, but still they have, uh, if you're behind him, he can deliver that ball, you know, just on a line like that. It just makes it tough to do anything about it, especially when he gets rid of it so fast, Adam. There's no, no chance you can get to him and to uh, disrupt things in the backfield. And it's an eight-yard pickup, so second down and two for the Jaguars. And they go to the air again. This is the running back, Trey Mentor, who gets the first down and more into Aggie territory, just his 20th catch this year for the sophomore from Ellaville, Georgia. Now, you know, you, you're trying to get in there and trying to affect it, but look, Ray, uh, Roy Lopez almost got to him, but that quarterback, Cole, is able to stand in there and still deliver a great pass. Terrell Hanks was able to spin Mentor out of bounds. All the way down to the Aggie 40-yard line. First down and 10 for South Alabama. Garvin on the quarterback keeper trying to get to the edge, and he's pulled down. Leon McQuaker who had a career high, 12 tackles, a sack, and a pick in the game against Idaho last week. Yeah, he got the start and, and played a phenomenal game. And so here he is again, playing the right position, staying at home, being patient as the play went away from him. He didn't bail out of there, but he stayed and looked for something coming back, and he was rewarded with the tackle. 
The Aggies with some big time depth right now at linebacker with Harrington, McQuaker, Famasino, Ferguson, and Hanks. A lot of options for linebackers coach Oliver Suka. Garvin, heavy pressure, Roy Lopez escapes him. There's Leon McQuaker again. He's all over the place early. And look at the speed, Adam. Look how fast he was. You could you could have said, hey, look, that looked like uh, Terrell Hanks or it looks like uh, Dalton Harrington comes screaming in there. But it all starts with the initial pressure that Roy Lopez puts on the quarterback there. Tries to step up in the pocket, but there's no pocket to be stepped up into. And Leon comes screaming in to make the finishing sack. This New Mexico State defense playing as well as they have the entire year. They lead the Sun Belt in interceptions and in sacks. A program record 36 sacks this year for the Aggies. Third down and a bunch. Third and 17 for the Jaguars on their second offensive series today. Heavy pressure again by McQuaker. Wow. Another drop for the Jaguars. That was McRae. Hey, that was a great offensive call right there, right? So you let him in and you throw it right back to where the linebacker vacated. And it had a little screen set up in there. And you could see we're out of position. We're out of guys. We're just we're outmatched. That we didn't have enough guys because we're going on a blitz. There's a second big drop. That was a ton of open field, too, for wow. Jordan McRae. Scary. scary. So Corliss Waitman will punt again, averaging 45 yards per punt, which is first in the Sun Belt. And he punched to Larry Rose the third. Rose the third hasn't had many returns this year. This one not returnable again. It bounces towards the sideline and out of bounds around the 15-yard line. There's Dalton Harrington. It is senior day today. Stody Bradley as well. The Yankees trying to finish off the regular season with a win and head to a bowl game. We're back after this. Straight home game for New Mexico State. Good crowd today here at Aggie Memorial Stadium as the Yankees try to finish the regular season, winning three of their final four. Today they're playing South Alabama Goose Eggs so far. Under eight minutes left here in the first quarter. Secure your seat in the Pan American Center for the 2017-18 New Mexico State men's basketball season. The Aggies are off to a 5-1 start. For more info or to purchase tickets, visit the Pan Am Center ticket office or call 575-646-1420. Have to commend Chris Jeans, the start that he has his program off to. And he has been a big supporter very vocal about this haggy football team and coming out to support them and the town has come out today rogers goes to the ground on first down it's jason huntley the backup running back and flags fly everywhere ball comes loose late after huntley was down little counter play here that just broke open you know everyone's on the on the line of scrimmage so you can quickly get to the second level in a hurry now I didn't know I didn't see what happened but there were plenty of flags flying in on that boy Jason Huntley breaks open it's gone Our referee today is Marshall Lewis illegal block in the back offense number 16 10 yards repeat first down so that was an illegal block in the back on Jaleel Scott the Aggie wide receiver there he is right there a man who is having one of the best years of any wide receivers around the country. A mistake there for Jaleel. And the Aggies are back to the 10-yard line. Two running backs. Rose the third in motion. Right back to the ground for Jason Huntley again, who cuts back to his left, and he's tackled by Daryl Sanji, a guy who will probably have his name called a lot today. Yeah, they were closing down in a hurry there. There was nothing happening on that. And I, and I know a lot of people are watching and thinking, and I've even talked to a lot that said, you know, we, we got to establish the run. You got to and just get your will and just on the other team and run it. Problem is, is that they just feels like they haven't quite won that line of scrimmage to continue running the ball. Rodgers, heavy pressure, completes the pass to Jaleel Scott. Can't escape the tackler. That was Jeremy Reeves. The two-time all Sun Belt selection coming from his safety position. So if you can't if you can't run the ball, the next thing you do is just pop up, throw it to your best receiver, and let him go from there. Nice pitch and catch to Jaleel Scott. Third down and five for the Aggies on their second offensive series today. That's Connor Kramer in motion, moving left to right. Rogers has Rose, doesn't use him, completes the pass. Across the 35-yard line up to the 40, that is Jonathan Boone, who had a pair of catches for 33 yards one week ago. 
Big first down for New Mexico State. Big first down for Jonathan Boone. You know, O.J. Clark's going to be out. There's going to be some other receivers. O.J.'s had some really big games. Jonathan Boone is a perfect one to step up and have a big game. Ball carrier, Larry Rose the third up the middle. Rose the third across the 40, gets to the 41. Yeah, Danny, you mentioned O.J. Clark is out. A separated shoulder for O.J., but good news for him. I was told he could be back if the Yankees go to a bowl game. Yeah, O.J. certainly helps us as a, as a receiving core, but we have a lot of receivers that can step up like Jonathan Boone. O.J. Clark second on the team in catches this year. They see the game today after separating his shoulder one week ago. And a flag flies before the snap. Ball start. Offense, number 76. Five yards. Still second down. And that's on the left tackle. Sage Dockstander, a false start. So some early miscues on this uh, drive for the Aggies. Yeah, I don't know if it's nerves or anything else. This is jumping in there, but you got to settle down in here, get to your game plan, and be able to start moving the ball down the field. Two penalties on this drive for the Aggies, and it backs them up to the 36-yard line. Rodgers, after missing a game and a half, completes the pass to Julio Scott near midfield. So two early catches for Julio, the big 6'6 redshirt senior. Yeah, just another quick toss and uh, catch right there, having a little in route that comes across the middle there, gets him in zone, and he finds that open area, and Tyler delivers a great pass in there. 66 catches now for Julio Scott this year, only 23 catches a season ago. It's a first down for the Aggies from the... 49-yard line. The Aggies will substitute as Connor Kramer heads off. Isaiah Lottie back in at wide receiver for the Aggies. Rodgers, 4 of 4. Doesn't look rusty at all. 46 yards passing for the redshirt senior QB. Three-year starter. Quick screen pass to the outside right. Jonathan Boone once again. Met by three Jaguars. Tobias Moss was there, so was Nigel Lawrence and Malcolm Bugs, the safety. You know, uh, I, had, I, don't see, uh, I don't see Jeremy Reeves in there. I don't know if uh, something has happened where he was not in there. I see some of the other ones, but a quick toss in, to the outside and uh, try to get some open space. This has kind of been one of our bread and butter plays we've had. And just throw it, boom, get as many yards as you can upfield. Yeah, you're right, Danny. No Jeremy Reeves right now. Good eyes. Second down and five for the Aggies, and we get an early flag again. Full start. Wow. Offense, number 77. Five yards. And this one is down. on Isaac McLean, the right tackle. So a false start on the left tackle, Doc Statter. And now the right tackle, McLean. And I'm sure Andy Richmond, the O-line coach, is furious on the Aggie sideline. The Aggies are finally healthy on the O-line. They were not a week ago. Their center, Jamin Smith, was out with an illness, and Brian Trujillo played well at center. Braden Medina started last week at left guard. Empty backfield for Rodgers. Three-step drop going deep. It's caught by the running back, Larry Rose, the third of the 30. Boy, has he been an instrumental in the passing game this year. Yeah, you get Larry Rose to sneak out of the backfield, and you really got to keep your eye on him, so you end up with uh, matching him up with uh, a backer or anyone else, and he just pulls away and just a little out route and dumps the ball. Rose the third now, 41 catches this year. The Yankees going with tempo. It's Rose the third on the carry. Leary only gets a couple across the 30 to the 29 yard line, so it's second down and eight. Well, if you want to improve your draft stock, Danny, if you show that you can catch the ball out of the backfield, that's going to help, right? Yeah, I think so without a doubt, especially if uh, you're not a power back or something that you can be able to do a lot of different uh, positions. And so, yeah, it absolutely does. The Aggies are on second down and eight from the 29-yard line. Rodgers will loft to pass a wheel route intended for Anthony Muse, the wide receiver who was in the backfield there. If that one's complete, he may take that one to the end zone. You know, a nice touch passed in there by Tyler Rodgers, too, and it looks like Muse just got tangled up trying to get out on that wheel route. So they weren't confused, but I think the Muse was going to run right past the backer on that side. And so he just got tangled up. It's at the bottom of your screen here. You couldn't really see it right before that, but barely missed that one. That was Jimmy Gibson into the coverage for South Alabama. A big third and eight for the Yaggies. First in the Sun Belt this year in third down conversions. Rodgers, using his legs, completes the pass on the sideline to Jaleel Scott. And the Yaggies get a first down. Jaleel able to get free, and the Yaggies have a first down. Yeah, I thought he was going to run that, right? So right here, as he breaks three steps up into the pocket, creates an opening, and was going to run it, and decides to step up and throw the ball. Great decision. 
Savvy footwork there for Jaleel Scott. Number 16 on the offense, went out of bounds, and then was the first to touch a forward pass. This is illegal touching, lost it down at the previous spot, it will be fourth down. Wow, illegal touching for New Mexico State. And that means a loss of down, so it's fourth down for fourth the Yankees. Yeah, that's too bad. I didn't, uh, I didn't see that. And certainly the judge on the sides over there was right there where he could see it. But, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Four penalties already, Adam. Wow. Well, this would be a 46-yarder. The Yankees will go for it on fourth and eight. Along this year for Dylan Brown is only 39, so the Yankees don't feel like he can knock it in from this distance. So the Yankees with an early gamble. Rodgers incomplete. It was intended for Jaleel Scott, batted away by the Jaguars, and the Yankees turn it over on downs. Yeah, Tyler certainly threw that one in on a rope right there, and it was just a little too much, couldn't get there, and uh, Jaleel can only get one paw up on that one. Do you like that gamble? I, I do, because where you are, it, I mean, you started there on a, a kickoff a few times, and so I think it's it's a good gamble. And you really don't have a knockdown kicker. Dylan Brown, 8 of 12 this year on a field goal. Jaguars with the football. Aren't senior day for New Mexico State after this. Look at that crowd. Early December in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The bull hype is real. New Mexico State trying to go to a bull game for the first time since 1960. Now, there were some implications on the line earlier today. Already four teams out of the Sun Belt bull eligible. There's five bull tie-ins. Well, Louisiana was one win away from bull eligibility going into play today. They're losing 42-7. to So it looks like if the Yankees win here, they'll be just fine getting in one of those Sun Belt bull tie-ins. Neither team rushing the ball well so far. Here is Jalen Wayne who's right now the third string running back for the Jaguars because of all their injuries. Yeah, right before that run, it wasn't, uh, it was, Aggies have zero rushing yards and a minus two, so if he got five or six yards there, so that's been the, the biggest rushing play for either team, which is kind of amazing. And here we are, 247 left in the first quarter. It's just kind of stumbled by this first yeah. quarter. It was kind of ugly. There's no rhythm. For the Jaguars, Denzel Foster and Deontay Moore both out with injuries. Program's all-time leading rusher, Xavier Johnson, is out with a suspension. This is Dallas Davis, who is now in at quarterback, uses his legs. And of the two quarterbacks for the Jaguars, it appears Dallas Davis is more the runner, right, Danny? I think so. I think he's a faster runner, and so certainly you're going to see him uh, grab the ball and take it upfield um, more so than Cole, and you'll see on that play right there, he's not afraid to just take the ball, pick the pitch, and just bring it on in. And there's a penalty on, on this play. Just like Cole Garvin, Dallas Outside. Davis is Defense, a junior. number 28. Penalty decline. Result of the play is the first down. Penalty decline. First down for South Alabama. We were told before this game, Cole Garvin and Dallas Davis would split here today. And in the fourth quarter, whoever's playing better will get, the, will get the quarterback duty. Whoever has the hot hand. Dallas Davis, a junior from Panama City, Florida. Played against the Aggies and played well against the Aggies in the final regular season game last year. He ran for 142. His toss is out of the reach of big wide receiver, the six foot four Jamarius Webb. I think Demarcus Owens cut that one like he was going to get a pick and take it to the house. I like it because he came out. Uh, Dallas did and looked straight at his receiver the whole time. And so uh, uh, Demarcus Owens just undercut that, was almost had that pick. Eight touchdowns, six interceptions this year for Dallas Davis. He did make five starts. Here's Davis on second and ten. He pumps, goes deep, looking for Malik Stanley. And he was able to alter what he was doing and make the catch. Good job by Stanley. The ball was under a throw, but Stanley able to get back and get it. He was able to make a play there. You got good defense on there, a little pump fake to try to get, you know, since we're jumping those routes a little bit, you pump fake and try to get them over top. We were there. Demarcus Owens is right there, but just couldn't make the play. Stanley's having a good day so far today. Coffeyville Community College transfer. He's a junior, 6'3", 220 pounds. First down and 10 for the Jaguars. Trey Minter to the left of the quarterback, Dallas Davis on first down. 
Davis underneath, caught by the tight end, Andrew Rankemeyer. And the senior from Overland Park, Kansas, gets four yards for the Jaguars. A little dragging tight end across the uh, middle there, and uh, Leon Quaker, that's his guy, and he jumps up on him pretty fast there, but still, still can't get to the quarterback. We're getting very close on trying to pressure him, and we're thinking, look, if we can get pressure on there, we'll affect uh, maybe get a turnover out of it, but you know, we just can't seem to get to either one so far, but I'm sure uh, coach will figure out a way to get there. Second down and six for South Alabama. Trying to score first today in the regular season finale. Davis has time, steps up in the pocket, he'll run again. Dalton Harrington right there for the Aggies, and like we said, Dallas Davis can run. 142 on the ground a year ago against the Aggies. And Showing off his legs so far, escaping pressure. Yeah, that last time that pocket collapsed and he had nowhere else to go but to take the ball and run with it. Big third down right here. Third and four for the Jaguars. They're one of three on third downs today, 30% for the year. Only averaging 20 points per game. The Aggies rush by, dumped off to Jamarius Way, and Jamarius Way looks like he has the first down as he's pushed out of bounds by Ron LaForce. Plenty enough for the first down up to the 11-yard line for Jamarius Way. Yeah, again, just a quick little toss to the outside here. Demarcus Owens is on coverage. He's got to come flying up there. Just couldn't get there in time. Was able to get the first down on us. So now the Jaguars fighting some rhythm with the backup Dallas Davis, who was 8 of 9 for 64 yards in the most recent game at Georgia Southern two weeks ago. And we have a timeout on the field. The Jaguars trying to punch it in and break their scoreless tie in Las Cruces. No points at the end of one quarter as New Mexico State tries to go bowling for the first time since 1960. South Alabama driving, though, and the Jaguars, Danny, they're going to use two quarterbacks today, and there's not much difference when you look at the numbers between Cole Garvin, who started, and Dallas Davis, who's playing well now. Yeah, it's very balanced, and, and I think, you know, the, the one of the small differences is Dallas may be a little faster, but when you look at their stats, it is very comparable. So far, a good drive for the Jaguars, seven plays for 60 yards. There was a 30-yard reception for Malik Stanley. And it's first down and 10 from the Aggie 11 for Dallas Davis and the Jaguars. This is Carlos Robinson in the backfield. Davis going to the end zone for Jamarius Way, and it's just out of his reach. The coverage there for Austin Perkins, the free safety. That great coverage by Austin there. You end up in man-to-man -man coverage because now you're, you're dialing up some pressure where you're going to come off the edges here. So you've got backers coming from every direction, and it leaves you in man-to-man -man coverage, and so you've got to be able to hold your own out there, and uh, Austin Perkins certainly did that on that play. Jaguars going right after the backup safety who's playing in place of Jaden Wright today who's out with a foot injury. Jaden is in uniform but probably will not play today. Dallas Davis on second down and 10 for South Alabama. The Yagi's showing blitz. Davis will fake the pitch. He keeps it. And Davis is in the end zone for a South Alabama touchdown. South Alabama. Flags in the end zone probably for excessive celebration. So you, if you look at that play, it's a, it, that's a classic over-pursuit by a linebacker that's come screaming in so fast, and, the, and Dallas just tech, took the ball and tucked it up underneath the, the uh, blitzing linebacker who over-pursued and gets it in for a touchdown. That's an 11-yard touchdown run for Dallas Davis to break the scoreless tie. Nine plays, 71 yards in three minutes and 20 seconds. There's a little fake right there, the little over-pursuit, and then um, just tuck it in there. Result of the play is a touchdown after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 19 for removing his helmet. 15 oh. yards will be added to the kickoff. Try for points. So that's on the Yaggies, unsportsmanlike, on Austin Perkins for removing his helmets. So no excessive celebration for the Jaguars after the run. 
That's six penalties on the Axe. Yeah, yeah. Lillen forced out of the kickoff. Gavin Patterson, the junior from Bourbonnet, Illinois, in the Chicago area, is on for the point after. Out of the hold of the punter, Corliss Waitman. Here's the kick, and it's good for Gavin Patterson. So it's the Jaguar scoring 10 seconds in to the second quarter to take a 7-0 lead, and I'm sure a lot of people around the Sun Belt, a lot of people around the country, surprised by the slow start for the Aggie offense. And I am too, as a matter of fact, Adam. I, I really am, because there's so much on the line. You would think you'd get out there and really turn it up right from the get-go. But, you know, you do have six penalties, and that really affects uh, flex your play without a doubt. And there just hasn't been any rhythm on the offense, it feels like. It just kind of sputters and then gets going a few plays and then sputter again. Penalties take you back. But, but yes, yeah, so now it, it is what it is. Now you work from a deficit, and you got to play. you got to play tough to get back on there match that score. There's Larry Rose, the third. No rushing yards so far for the Yagi. Seven for Larry, negative seven for Jason Huntley. So all 71 yards on offense for the Yagis are through the air from Tyler Rogers, who's been pretty good so far, six of eight. And now this is an easy kickoff here for the Jaguars. Gavin Patterson will kick this one off. And he kicks it off in the 50s, so you would have to think he'll just boom it through the end zone. Patterson usually doesn't handle kickoffs for the Jaguars. This one is returnable, though, for the Yaggies. So a shorter kick than expected. And the Yaggies are trying to take advantage to the 30-yard line of the 35. And up to near the 40 is Jonathan Boone. I'm not sure, Adam. Why, why do you do it? I'm not sure. You know, you, you have it. Kick it, kick it in there. Maybe they're thinking they can pin him back on the 10 and great coverage, which is a possibility. But you also have 50-50 chance of trying to get a return and get upfield a little bit, which is exactly what Jonathan Boone did. He took it all the way to the other side, up around the corner, and got some good positive yards. Ball is marked down at the 42-yard line. Now, usually Gavin Patterson doesn't handle kickoffs. Usually it's Corliss Waitman, the punter, or Frankie Onate, the backup place kicker, who's only a freshman. Let's see if the Yagi offense can find a rhythm. In the flat for Larry Rose, the third. A couple blockers ahead. Good block there by Greg Hogan. Getting Larry free for a few more near the first down marker. And you're right, Adam. That whole play is the blocking on the, on the point of attack right there. So you pick up a block and you're able to get out around the corner there. Important block by that receiver out there that's, um, that's leading the way. And it is good enough for a first down for the Yagi. So first down and 10. After the pass and catch from Rogers to Rose. Rogers to the ground for Larry, who runs into his left tackle, Sage Dockstatter, and he's bounced backward. How about this, Danny? This is the first road lead for South Alabama since October 11th at Troy. It's almost two months ago. Yeah. yeah certainly there's players on, on the South Alabama side, so not totally surprised, but they had a rash of bad luck. But, you know, they, they certainly are pulling it together today. Isaiah Lottie in motion to the bottom side of your screen for the Yankees on second down and 11 across the middle. It's complete, but not much there for Lottie. Met by Nigel Lawrence. That was good for Lottie to be able to hold on to that ball there because he had a lot, of, uh, a lot of people all around him there. So right in the traffic, he throws the ball. Two guys come screaming up, and Lottie was able to hold on to the ball. Good enough for the first down. Lottie gets three. It's third down and eight for the Yaggies. Three-step drop for Tyler Rogers. Check that. That was first down. It is complete. A deep ball to Jaleel Scott. That's one of those ones, Adams. It's almost too open that it makes it hard. But Tyler launched the ball with a little touch underneath there so he can run under it. Nice little move by Jaleel Scott. You see him throw the ball up so he can run underneath it. Wide open. Great catch. Rodgers right back to the air. Line drive toss into the end zone looking for Scott again. And it's batted away in coverage by Tobias Moss. So they come back with tempo. And we got a, a down player here for South Alabama. But Looks the Aggies like Khalil come McDonald there down. Ah. Aggies come back with tempo. And they're looking to throw that fade route over to Scott. But uh, couldn't get it done. 
too low of a thrill right there from Tyler Rogers, you think? I, I think so. I, I think there was good defense, too. So I think they were ready for it, and they were standing there. So, yeah, you get just up a little bit more. I think that's a touchdown. Khalil McDonald, a sophomore from Madison, Alabama. Redshirted two years ago, did not see action last year. 25 tackles this year for McDonald. And he's the man down right now for USA. It's going to be second down and 10 for the Yaggies. You know, last, last week, Khalil also had a good chance to pick six and take it to the end zone. Um, and he wasn't able to, to get it pulled off, but um, is it, he's going to be an uh, important player that if they lose him, that they'll need him back there. McDonald, one of the safeties for the Jaguars. Tyler Rogers trying to lead a scoring drive for the Aggies and tie this up at seven. Trying to answer the Jaguars' score. Rose the third to the left of Rogers on second down and ten from the 13-yard line. Let's see where the Aggies go here. They're going to loft it to the end zone. It's bobbled and dropped. Connor Kramer, the quarterback turned wide receiver. Yeah, you know, Connor's got great hands, and he usually pulls down everything that's close to him, and so I'm not sure if someone got a hand in there or not. But it was, he threw it right into coverage a little bit too, and so let's see if he gets, defense gets a hand in there. Yep, yep. Almost picked it. And yeah, that was to Ryan Mills who almost picked it. Good retreat by him. Big third down and 10 for the Aggies. Four wide receivers set for Rodgers, the redshirt senior. Back to the end zone and nobody's home. Larry Rose the third was the nearest Aggie. And the Aggies will have to settle for a field goal attempt. You know, it just doesn't look like the um, the rhythm and the um, is, is in place there. So I don't know if he was thinking of Jaleel Scott, who was on that sidelines as well. And Jaleel Scott came back to Tyler and uh, le the left Randy. only Larry Rosen out there. But yeah, it just looked like it was thrown into the no man's land. No one around there. So this will be a 30-yard field goal try for Dylan Brown. 8 of 12 this year, along of 39 for the sophomore from Chandler, Arizona. Out of the hold of Connor Kramer. The kick by Brown is good. So Dylan Brown able to bang it through. And the Aggies get on the scoreboard, but it may feel like a drive where the Aggies could have scored a touchdown. They'll settle for a field goal. It is 7-3, South Alabama. Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces, New Mexico State, trying to move to 3-2 and two at home this year in the final home game of the season on Senior Day. It is 7-3, the Jaguars lead. Adam Young alongside Danny Nee, and here is a look at the Sun Belt standings. There is a long jam at the top, 6-1 Troy, 6-1 Arkansas State. Those two teams play each other today. Georgia State Bowl eligible. And Appalachian State right now is pounding Louisiana, a team that is one win away from bowl eligibility. So the Aggies and the Jaguars tied for seventh. Today's game is sponsored by Farm Bureau Financial Services. Schedule a super check with your agent today to make sure your world is protected. Parker Davidson will kick off for the Aggies. And he boots this one into the end zone. And it is returnable for Kawan Baker. And Baker won't even get to the 15. Probably should have kneeled. I'll try to wrestle across the 15-yard line. Physical game early. A lot of penalties on the Aggies. They're trying to clean that up, Danny. Yeah, I think they need to. I think they need to figure out what's going on and why there's so many penalties. And a lot of them on the offensive side of the ball. You know, you've got some false starts, block in the back. You got some, some some basic things that you just can't be doing in order to, to go down there and and play a team like South Alabama. And I know they've had a lot of injuries, a lot of things happening, but they're not just going to roll over. So they need to get it back together. And I think it starts with a good defensive stand right here where you can keep your field position. Well, we saw Cole Garvin for the first two series for the Jaguars, and now Dallas Davis in for his second series after a pretty good series for him. Play action, the Aggies rush three, dumps it off to the running back, Trey Minter. Minter dancing across the 30-yard line, across the 35 as well, just shy of the 40. 
on a big pass and catch, a little dump off there to Trey Minter. Yeah, that's what you do when you have a defensive team that's uh, very aggressive and trying to really get to the quarterback and you want to uh, go get him as much as you can is that you dump it right in behind that line where you get to the second level in a hurry. It's exactly what they did. They just dumped it off and you left with uh, one guy back there, Leon Quaker, trying to make a, make a tackle with uh, lots of blockers in front. Two receptions now today for the running back, Minter. He gets 21 of that reception. Davis fumbles, and the Yankees recover, it looks like. Roy Lopez was trying to smother it. It's Yankee football. Shaman Lomax again. Fumble recovery number three for him this year. Hey, a turnover works as well. I thought it bounced right into Roy Lopez's hands, and I'm not sure how Shamad uh, ended up with the ball, but let's see what happens right here. Looks like he wasn't sure if he was going to hand it off or keep it or what's going to happen, and it just over not and put, didn't put it in his stomach, and it did bounce into Roy, and somehow went through him, and there's Roy Lopez with the ball right there, and it kind of squirts out maybe, and Shamad Lomax is right there to help making sure we get it, which is a great job. Danny, Turnover. Shamad Lomax now has four interceptions, four forced fumbles, and three fumble recoveries this year. The football finds him. He's a magnet. Rogers on the out route to Isaiah Lottie, who sidesteps out of bounds. First down for Lottie. He's been busy so far today. He's been targeted a few times. Had two catches for 15 yards last week after no catches in the four games before that. So now here they go with some tempo, right? So you could get a little pass right there, and you come back with tempo and do it, do it again or run the ball. Rose the third, changing directions, and he's tackled from behind as a somersault. Daryl Sanji once again making the tackle for the Jaguars. You know, Adam, passing the ball or moving the ball, okay, throwing the throwing it, but somehow I don't quite understand why it is we can't really impose our will on him and run the ball. Since sure. we had a, a healthy offensive line there, we should be able to get some running going as well. Five carries, only six yards for Larry Rose the third so far, who's one of the best players in program history. Rogers has time. Good job by the O line. Rogers with plenty of time. Throws a dart. And it's Isaiah Lottie again. So no OJ Clark and Isaiah Lottie's filling that void. Yeah, you, we talked about OJ Clark and the and the role that he can play and that there's a lot of guys in the receiver corral that we can go to. Isaiah Lottie is stepping up and that's how a lot of guys get their mark, right? It's like, look, I get my chance, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna get it done. And and, and Lottie is getting it done. Lottie gets four. It's third down and six for the Yankees. Two of four on third downs today. Muse in motion. They go to Anthony Muse, and he falls as he catches it. So the Yankees don't get anything. No gain right there. Really wasn't a whole lot of running room for Muse. Nigel Lawrence was hawking him from his rover safety position. Well, Adam, you know, it's kind of anticlimactic that you get a turnover, right? And then... You can't do anything with it, and you end up in a field goal, which is good. You're getting points or attempt here. We're going to get points, but it almost got to put that in for seven. This one from 32 for Dylan Brown, who just nailed one from 30. Far side hash again, and this one is hooking, and it hooks in for Dylan Brown. So the Yankees are settling for field goals. They're getting points, though. Dylan Brown, two for two. He is now 10 of 14 for the year. So it's three, but it's not six. It's seven to six. South Alabama has a one-point lead against New Mexico State here in the regular season finale. The Aggies try to end the nation's longest bowl drought, 57 years. Back-to-back -back made field goals for Dylan Brown. The Aggies still trying to establish that running game with Jason Huntley and Larry Rose the third. It is a one-point Jaguars lead here this afternoon. The Aggies will kick it off to South Alabama. We'll see if Kawan Baker will take this one out. He will again. Took one out to the 16 on the last kickoff by the Aggies, and this one is near the 20 up to the 21-yard line for Baker and the Jaguars. Leon McQuaker is on skates today. He makes the tackle on special teams. He's flying everywhere, and, and that's, a, that's a good special teams play right there to be able to uh, shut it down, down to the 20 on that. They're striking the Wonder Dog, who goes and retrieves the tee. The fans get a kick out of it. And let's see who's in at QB for the Jaguars. It looks like it's Cole Garvin. It is. So 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Garvin went two series. Then Davis got two series. Now Garvin's back in there. It's hard to find a rhythm when you're doing this, right, Danny? It seems like it. It seems like it would be tough, but they were 
so far have been moving up and down the field a little bit. Thanks to pitch, Garvin is hit by Stody Bradley at the 25-yard line. He gets four at second down and six. Garvin so far today is four of seven for 33 yards. It was a rushing touchdown for Dallas Davis, the backup QB. And that gave the Jaguars a 7-0 lead earlier. Mincer, the sophomore, is in the backfield for the Jaguars. On second down and six, Garvin. Quick toss, and Chimharia's way was going the other way. He was going deep on a vertical route. And yeah. Tarvin thought it was a comeback route. You, you know, talk about that the Aggies had no rhythm. But certainly there was no rhythm here. There's just no, no way that uh, they're connected on what's going on right here. Clearly going upfield, and they thought he was going to break it off and come back, and nothing being right there. So opportunity for the Ags right here now creates a third down situation. Garvin's caught some bad breaks. Two drops when he was in earlier. Now miscommunication with their star receiver, Jamarius Way. Jaguars, two of five on the third downs today. Garvin across the middle. This one is caught. And it is seldom used receiver Jameer Taylor with just his fourth catch this year. You know, there were two open guys on, the, on that route, so there were two crossing drag routes that were uh, happening right there. So it's going to be close. I don't know if they got to the first, but two guys were open. The, the dragging route going from the other direction was wide open as well. They mark it at the 30, so the Jaguars are short by one yard. And they will play conservative. Corliss Waitman is into punts for USA here. Waitman. Waitman today has already had three punts. He's the best in the Sun Belt, averaging 45 yards per punt. This one is a high punt. Larry Rose, the third dangerous move. Whoa as he has to dive towards it. I think he muffed it initially, and fortunately for Larry, it didn't get very far away from him. I think receiving a punt is the toughest job in football because as you're looking up there, and there he gives a little smile about it, as you're looking up there, they are attacking, ready to put the lick to you. You know, even if you raise your hand for a fair catch, they have to give you opportunity to catch the ball, but they're still right in your face. They're right there. It's a very tough job. 42-yard punt for Corliss Waitman. The Yaggies will have the ball. At their own 28-yard line, 8-18 left here in quarter number two. It is 7-6, South Alabama. So now you come back. So now, you know, it, the, the run is still there. The run, it has to be I say it's still there. You still have to work on it. You still have to go to it. But we haven't been able to run much at all. In fact, if we look at the, the rushing yardage, I think, the Aggies have minus one, but you can't just totally give up on it because then that makes you one-dimensional. So you still have to go to it, but for some reason they haven't been able to get anything going on on the ground rushing the ball. Rodgers doesn't look rusty at all. He doesn't look rusty throwing the ball one bit. You're absolutely right. And I think this is where, you know, Coach Martin says, hey, look, I, I'd like to call and go to whatever they give me. So if they're going to stuff the line of scrimmage and not allow me to run the ball, then I'm going to throw it all day long. And he's got no problem doing that, especially if Tyler's there and he's got some rhythm. Um, he can really put a, some damage to the defense. Really nice crowd today here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. The last bowl game for the Yaggies was 57 years ago. It's the longest drought in the country. The Aggies have been to three bowl games, 1936, 1959, and 1960. And the Aggies were bowl eligible. I think some fans forget in 2002, but the current rule for a minimum of six wins for bowl eligibility was not in place until 2006. So back when the Aggies had seven wins in 02, yeah. they didn't get in. Yeah, that Coach Samuels at the time, a great coach, and he was able to get into seven wins, but uh, different rules at that time, as you said. Here's a look at the four possessions today for the Aggies, a punt. Turnover on downs, 30-yard field goal, 32-yard field goal. And there's a look at the Sun Belt tie-ins. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Underneath, Greg, Greg Hogan makes the catch, and he's tripped up out of bounds. we got a flag down as well near the 30-yard line. Maybe a blocking in the back or something over there, which is too bad. But, again, Coach Martin, take a, take a little uh, play from what they've been running where you have blitzing or 
pressing linemen backers you throw in behind them and that's what coach martin did and uh, get hogan crossing on that route um, but had someone block in the back over there it looks like once again our referee today is marshall lewis that's a that's a lot of discussion right there for a blocking in the back play so maybe there's something else to happen so here's just a dump underneath right there and so i think if they call that it. offense 10 yards repeat first down you hear the call there, Danny? Holding, I thought. Holding, yeah. I, I don't, did he, did he give a number? Or? I don't think so. Wow. I, I, how do you correct it when you're not even sure? Yeah. It's like holding someone. So 10-yard penalty, the replay first down here. First down and 20 for the Yankees. Pushed all the way back now to the 17-yard line. Rodgers will throw on first down. Checks it down to Larry Rose the third. Rose the third with open field. He bangs it across the 30. Back to the original line of scrimmage and some more. You know, you just forget how hard Larry Rose runs. So you'll see this little screen pass. He's going to dump it off right here. One block that we missed right out in front there. But he's able to shake that tackle and then just go get as many positive yards as possible and just put his head down. And you see some people launching themselves at him. That's what makes him so dangerous is how shifty he is. He can change directions as quick as anybody. Rose the third got 14 yards on the reception. Jaleel Scott, a few yards shy of the marker for first down. He gets four on the reception there. It's going to bring up third down and two for the Yankees. Yeah, you know, you can go to that pass to Jaleel Scott all day long, especially if they're playing off him like they are. And that, that pass is there all day long. And what it sets up is it sets up the pump and go where you're going to be able to do that little hook pump him and then get him upfield. Rogers rolling a right, looking deep, double coverage. Did Jaleel Scott hang on? We're gonna say no, it was incomplete and they may take a look at this. Doug Martin right there near the official. Let's see if we can see anything here. Really Double coverage, too. He got one pass. in the back and he got one underneath. He gets by both of them. Let's see if he gets in there. Ooh, I think he caught it, Danny. Yeah. I hard. think he caught it. It's hard to see from that angle completely. But the initial ruling is incomplete. And you know what? You bring up a good point. It's hard to see. Yeah. So is there enough there to overturn it? So we're going to take a look. I don't know if there's enough to change it. Because the call in the field is incomplete. Right. Is there enough evidence here to say, oh, yeah, he caught it, no doubt about it? Because there's a chance he cuffed it with yeah. the turf. Yeah, I agree with you. There's a great chance. That's a great job right there, too, by him. Catch or no catch. But he was able to put himself in a position to make something happen. Let's see if we can see it. Can the, can the fans make the call? Yes, if they I can, mean, judging if by they the can reaction, we'll be doing right? good, right? Yeah. It's when he hit the deck, right? Jaleel Scott has had a phenomenal year, and some of the catches that he's made is really fantastic. And I guess part of that being awarded is when you go to the Senior Bowl, so which is another great honor for, uh, for an Aggie. Yeah, Jaleel will play in the prestigious Reese's Senior Bowl, which is on January 27th in Mobile, where South Alabama is located. And we will get another replay here. Let's see if this angle is any better. What do you think here, Danny? Would you be surprised if they changed it? I would be, I guess I would be, I couldn't, I couldn't see right there if it jumped up off the, off the turf when he hit, which, which leads me to believe that I, there's not enough to overturn that. It looks like a catch there, and then what happens right there? They're changing it. Exactly what I said, Adam. Didn't I just say that? I said, well I done, think it's partner. a catch, and well it's done, all over. I'm an, Aggie, I'm an Aggie through and through, it's a catch. You take it and you run, don't you? You take it and you run, exactly After right. review, the receiver did complete the catch. This is a first down, 39-yard yeah. line. We wow, saw numerous replays. Right. He was sandwiched in between two white jerseys. 
There was double coverage there. Double Great coverage. pass by Rodgers. So the Yagi's in Jaguars territory. Five receptions, 80 yards for Jaleel Scott today. And the Yagi's will stay to the air. Oh. Jonathan wow. Boone holds it in. I like the awareness of, of Boone being able to know that I'm right on the sidelines there. You've got to get one foot in in college, and he was tiptoeing the whole time. You had someone in Tyler Rogers' face right from the beginning here, and he stood in the pocket there and delivered a great pass, as you see at the bottom there. Drags and makes a great, great catch. Hankey comes out again on first down and 10 for the Yaggies for the 28. Full start. Offense, five yards, repeat first down. Once again, they don't identify a number, but it's on the Yagi O-line again. So that is the third penalty on the Yagi O-line today. Seven penalties for 92 yards here in the first half for New Mexico State with six and a half left. A pair of Dylan Brown field goals for the Yagis. The Jaguars, an 11-yard touchdown run for the quarterback, Dallas Davis, trickery. Reversal for Jason Huntley trying to get to the edge. He does. Huntley to the 25-yard line. And Jason Huntley is snatched down there. The speedster from Arlington almost gets the corner. He gets that corner. He is off to the races. Eight-yard pickup there for Jason Huntley. So the Yagis back into business on second down and seven. Jason Huntley has not been as involved recently as he was early on this year, especially when Larry Rose the third missed a game due to an injury. It is Jason Huntley who's in at running back right now. Pass is complete. Jonathan Boone has been a big target today for Rodgers. Four has. receptions. And we talked about the rhythm not being there. This is a case where the rhythm was perfectly there. Everyone's on the line of scrimmage. It's a blitz. It's an all-out blitz from every angle. They're coming at Tyler Rodgers. Tyler Rodgers has to sit in there knowing that he's going to take a little pop and deliver a great pass in there for Boone. Another first down. The Aggies back in the red zone from the 14-yard line on first down and 10. Quick drop for Rodgers, goes near side of the field, high grab for Jonathan Boone, back-to-back -back catches for him. He's knocked down at the 11-yard line, he gets three. Second down and seven. Great catch there, he gets up there and gets a little jump on that one, and man, he takes a little pop on himself for getting all the way in the air, catches the ball, takes care of it, and hits that deck hard. Aggies at the 11. Rose the third to the left of the quarterback Rodgers. Two seniors right there. Larry Rose the third is hit at the 10. He gets by that line right there. He's able to get into the end zone. He was hit by Roxell McWilliams, the Missouri transfer. You, you know, if, it's just like he's one block, one arm tackle away from breaking that wide open because you get by that first level there's no one on the second and third level and he's off so i can see why they're trying to make that run happen but you know we just can't get past that defensive line third down and six for the yagis they need the four yard line that's the line to gain here rogers looks left then throws right completes touchdown anthony muse you know, we talked about someone stepping up, and there's a lot of someone stepping up in that receiving core. It was a great pass, but also lots of great blocking up front on that offensive line. Somehow they can't get the run going, but the pass, they got good pass protection in there. Tyler takes time. He's looking, checks left, checks right, sees Muse in the back and delivers just a dart for a touchdown. Dylan Brown for the point after. 13-7 after the second career. Receiving touchdown for the redshirt sophomore out of Slimar, California, Anthony Muse. Career touchdown to pass number 63 for Rodgers. His 25th this year, and the Yankees take their first lead today. Back to action here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Short return for the Jaguars, and they will start at their own 29-yard line. First down and 10 for them with 4.01 left here in the first half. The Aggies have scored 13 
unanswered. Cole Garvin in for his second straight series. Oh. Almost picked up by Terrell Hanks, who stepped in front of the tight end, Andrew Rankemeyer. I don't think uh, Hanks was fooled one second, was he? A little no. play action in there, but I think he was just looking at one receiver the whole time, and I think Hanks saw that and stepped right in front of there. That's pick six right there. Just hang on, but that was a hard-thrown ball right there. That scoring drive for the Yankees, nine plays, 71 yards, four minutes and 10 seconds, a nine-yard touchdown catch by Anthony Muse. Second down and 10. Both teams passing a ton. This one is complete. David Gardner, big gain for the Jaguars. Gardner, five catches for the year for them, came in the last game against Georgia Southern. Well, David Gardner found that soft spot in the zone there. Come out, had a two-deep zone, and he found a little crease in the middle there and uh, just sat down in there and delivered a perfect pass to him. 17-yard connection between Garvin and Gardner. From the 46-yard line, first down and 10 for South Alabama. The Aggies once again with 13 unanswered. Double reverse. Here's Gardner again after getting the exchange from Carlos Robinson. And he's knocked out of bounds by Shamad Lomax, the New Mexico State cornerback. Yeah, Perkins and Lomax both there oh, yeah. really helping uh, Cedric Wilcox. As you'll see, number 10 right here, he takes the fake and bites on it. He needs to be staying home right there. But you do have some speedy uh, safeties, corners that come screaming up there to help you. Smod Lomax playing a heck of a game right there, came screaming in on it. No gain, second down and 10 for USA. They think the handoff to Robinson. The rush comes for the Yuggies. Garvin to throw, and he completes it. David Gardner again, he's doing everything on this series. Yeah, you know, just a scrambling play. You just just uh, couldn't get to the quarterback, and Gardner just breaks free from his route, cuts it off, and gets in the open space, and able to just get in there and sit down and catch the ball. Cole Garvin now 5 of 9. Dallas Davis 4 of 6. The Jaguars have used two quarterbacks today. From the 34-yard line, first down and 10 for the Jaguars. Three wide receivers for them. Garvin tosses out to the running back, Trey Mentor. And that is a touchdown saving tackle for Leon McQuaker. Yeah, you know, Leon McQuaker, he's playing fast right there, but he has to get out on that right away. And so, you know, this is a, it's a good play call by uh, South Alabama to come out here and just sneak one out of the, out of the backfield on there. It's good for another South Alabama first down. This so far has been their best series offensively. Moving right down the field to the 23-yard line. Mentor has been used a ton in the passing game today. The block here. Garvin will run. Garvin wrestled down by Shemai Lomax at the 20. They'll mark him down at the 19. He gets four. I think that was McQuaker who was putting the initial trying to get to him and couldn't, couldn't quite get there but it did make Cole kind of run sideways. And all of a sudden you get Shaman who's just screaming up, man. He is everywhere today. Yeah, Shaman Lomax able to recover a fumble earlier. Recovering a fumble for the second straight week. The ball is marked at the 20, so it's second and seven. Garvin throws right. That's a really, really tough pass. Terrell Hanks on the coverage. Gardner, the intended receiver. They're certainly trying to get rid of that ball fast, and they're not going to let the, the Aggies get to either quarterback, but the quarterbacks for uh, either Cole or Dallas for South Hale Ballon have been able to get rid of that ball and just deliver it right away. And that's the previous play that you saw right there where you saw Shamad Lomax just showing his speed, being able to come up there and support that run. Big third down right now. Third and seven. Jaguars 2 of 5 on third downs today. Heavy rush. Pass is complete to Kawan Baker, who's still on his feet at the two-yard line, and he's trying to push his way into the end zone. Flags come out. He was wide open across the middle, Danny. He was. There was no one there. He, he got us in the zone again, and everyone was sitting back, and uh, lots of time to sit back in that pocket and deliver a, a dart in there, a good pass. 
That's Ron LaForce right there. Initial contact. Perkins is helping. And then just get to be a pushing match. And then a flag came in. That is only catch number six this year for Kawan Baker. So guys who have not been used much this year for the Jags, Kawan Baker and David Gardner, instrumental during this drive for the Jaguars. After the play, personal foul, offense, number 75, 15 wow. yards. Because the result of the play is the first down, it will be first and 10 from that penalty spot. That's their first penalty. That is on Harrison Loudon, the senior right guard for Mobile. Who last year was the center for the Jacks, this year the right guard. And that one hurt a little bit too because you get all the way down to the goal line and now you had to kick it back out. The ball was going to be at the 2, now it's at the 17. First penalty today for the Jags for 15 yards, of course, and it's first down from the 17. Double reverse. Pressure coming from Malik Denby, and then Jordan McRae has to step out of bounds. A loss in the play for the Jacks. You know, Malik Denby, we haven't called him much either, so I think he's coming in and out there. Not much. You know, they're going to pull every trick out that they can in the book. There you kind of see the axe sitting at home right there. Roy Lopez can look pressure in the backfield, making him belly it out wide. And that's where Malik comes screaming in there to push him out of bounds. You could tell right there. All well, the guys knew their assignments. Everybody was yeah. where they were supposed to be. Yeah, and you saw Roy Lopez shaking his head. It's like, no, nah, you didn't fool me. He didn't. He was there. USA loses four in the play. It's second down, 19. All the way back to the 26. They were going to have the football at the two. The Aggies rush four. There's Terrell Hanks. The ball pops loose. The ball pops oh. loose out of bounds. Terrell Hanks able to jar it loose. Yeah, there's a, there's a situation right there where they've held the ball a little bit too long. Terrell Hanks comes like in a delayed blitz and was able to get to him, knock the ball out, but just couldn't get it before it bounced out of bounds. Great defensive stop right there. That will be a loss of 13, Danny. Wow. They're all the way back to the 39 or the 40. Let's see where they mark it. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense wow. number two for taunting. That is number two's first what unsportsmanlike conduct do? foul of the game. 15 yards. That like that Hanks, an and that will down. change the complexion of this drive. And there's only 53 seconds left here in the half. I didn't see it. He clearly was excited about it, but I didn't see what happened after he knocked the ball out of the out of his hands and it bounced around. That's too bad because it really puts them back into field goal position where they're right on the cusp of of it um, of making it. And sportsman like a 15-yard penalty. So instead of the 40, it's the 25, and it's first down and 10 for South Alabama. That changes things there. 53 seconds left here at half one. More pressure. Roy Lopez is all over. Cole Garvin, who completes the pass to the tight end, Rankemeyer. Hey, you saw Roy Lopez in there. Saw Malik Dimby in there again. And, and, First charge uh, time just a pass South out of Alabama. You know, just uh, quickly get it out of your hands. I'm surprised that couldn't get in there and make something happen where they get a pick or something going on there. The Jaguars lose one, and then a timeout is called by South Alabama. Well, there's 43 seconds left there at the 26-yard line right now, Danny. I know you want to hold them to no points, but if you hold them to just a field goal here, that wouldn't be all too bad either. Then you would at least have a lead and a half. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And let me, let me say that uh, South Alabama doesn't seem to have, uh, you know, someone may have thought, well, there may, need, may not be a lack of uh, energy in the game. It may not, you know, the, may not be there the whole time, you know, because the coach is leaving. A lot of things are happening. They got injuries. I have to tell you, Adam, they, they, didn't, they came to play. They're ready, fired up, and they're, they're really getting after it. And we thought they would. They would play for Joey Jones today, their head coach, who's coaching his final game at South Alabama. He's been the only head coach in program history. Jaguars program has only been around for nine years and they made a bowl game one year after becoming a full-fledged Division I FBX. They've been to a bowl game two of the previous three. They will not go this year, but they're in this one here in the first half. 
Second down and 11 after the loss of one on the completion of Rankemeyer. They fake the toss, and the Aggies read it. Cedric Wilcox, the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week on the tackle. You know, Cedric Wilcox has a wingspan in his arms, and he can cover so much ground, and he just spread those arms out, and even on the fake, it just wasn't going to happen. He just said, nope, and he got that left paw in there and just held on. Great defense right there. That will go as a sack for Wilcox. Eight and a half now for him this year. And we get another timeout. Three left for the Yagis, only one left now for the Jaguars. This Aggie defense is pressuring like no Aggie defense we have seen in quite some time, Danny. They, the whole philosophy has changed here, it seems like, with Frank Spaziani. Yeah, I think Frank Spaziani has done a great job. I mean, everyone talks about that um, a lot of things have gone right for him offensively for the Aggies this year, but I, I really believe that having Coach Spaziani here two years in a row makes a big difference. And his whole philosophy about getting everyone to the ball, about being aggressive, about the blitzing, um, and you can just see it through the year that this defense has come to play on uh, many, many games. Third and 14 for South Alabama for the 29. This will be a 46-yard field goal if they have to kick one. Garvin has pressure, nearly runs into two Aggies. He has another one. Wilcox trying to wrestle him down. He gets rid of it. It's intercepted, but flags are down. It was intercepted by Terrell Hanks. We'll see if it stands. And I think that was in the in the holding area, but we'll see what happens there. But and he was scrambling for his life there, wasn't he? I was surprised. I was wondering if the next guy was going to get there or not. So here it is right here. And you see Cole kind of jumping around a little bit. Nothing happening there. Holding it comes back. Going 64. around. All of a sudden he gets some pressure. Don't Nothing. Goes out. back the other way and just trucks the ball in the air. And then Hanks just steps up and picks that thing. Everywhere he looked, Danny. There was, there was a crimson, crimson jersey. skirt, yep, no doubt. It will stand. It was a holding call on the Jaguars, so the Yankees will get the interception. Terrell Hanks with his second interception this year. The Jaguars get no points. The Yankees have now forced two turnovers, and they haven't committed one. And with 25 seconds left, we'll see if the Yankees just kneel. And they will. Well, 13-7. I think we expected more points, but New Mexico State scores the final 13 in the first half. And they go into half two with some momentum after a big stop defensively. Yeah, defensively when they got there in that whole that personal foul when they were on the one yard line really cost them everything and marched the back and then everything just fell to pieces from there. They try to catch up with the Aggie head coach, Doug Martin, before he heads off the field here at halftime. 13-7 is our score. Dallas Davis, an 11-yard touchdown run to start the scoring today. And then back-to-back -back field goals for Dylan Brown of 30 yards and 32 yards. And then Tyler Rogers to Anthony Muse. Anthony's second receiving touchdown this year and career-wise. Nine yards away to put the Aggies ahead 13-7. And the defense for the second straight game playing very, very well. Forcing turnovers and making a big stop to finish off the first half as well. Doug Martin is making his way towards our guys and we might not be able to catch up with him. I think I saw him over there and run down an official. He ran down the uh, white hat and he's chewing his ear as they're walking up the ramp there. So I'm not sure what he's so fired up about, but uh, he was certainly, you saw him in the huddle there and he was fired up getting his team ready to go. So if he doesn't get there, yeah. I understand, right? So he's got a lot of energy no flowing, a lot of energy flowing. Halftime comes your way next. We are back with you here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. There's a couple of New Mexico State volleyball players, Tatiana Battle, Jordan Abalos. Enjoying this one. A really good crowd today, a December 2nd game. Usually the Aggies don't have a whole lot to play for in November, let alone December. And today the Aggies trying to become bowl eligible and make their first bowl game since 1960. What surprises you here, Danny? I know the well, rushing yards, I'm sure. Yeah, the, for sure, rushing yards. But either team, right? You would think that someone would break out one and, and be able to start putting together a rushing uh, player or two, but neither have, and it's all been passing, and so you see the Aggies on top. The other thing that really jumps out is there's seven penalties. I think there may be more than that, but seven. 
that it's really killing the Aggies. I think they need to come out, and they still need to be able to pressure that uh, quarterback, and you need to stay with the run. They're uh, just one block away from breaking those wide open, and then you'll see that rushing yard start to start, start to get up more yards. And the return of Aggie quarterback Tyler Rogers has been impactful. He's 19 of 24 for 213 yards. No mistakes, no picks, one in, one touchdown. Yeah, he's throwing some great balls too, right? There's a couple that he threw to Jaleel Scott that was in double coverage. They were just spot on. He's done a great job. Stood in the pocket, took some pops, and he's able to get back next play. He's done fantastic. And Aggies will receive the kick to start the second half. This is the Route 66 kickoff. If the Yankees return this kick for a touchdown, one lucky fan will win $10,000 courtesy of Route 66. Get your kicks at Route 66. So the Yankees will get the first possession here in half two, try to build on their six-point lead, which is what it's at currently. Jason Huntley and Jonathan Boone are back deep for the Yankees right now. And it's Gavin Patterson who will kick it off for the Jacks. And here we go. We're underway in the second half. Jason Huntley will take it in his end zone. Huntley angles back towards the 20-yard line, and he is smothered right there. Oh, well, he was able to hold on to the ball there, too, but that it was opening just for a second. I saw a crease that Jason might get into, but, boy, that closed down in a hurry, and they gave him a pop, but he held on to the ball nicely. Here it is right here. You start to the left, usually to draw everyone in, and he just, oh, man, he took one there. <laughs> well, special teams guys love to hit. And Jason Huntley was hit pretty hard right there. So the Yankees with their first series here in the third. Rodgers, the quarterback. Larry Rose, the third, the running back. Rodgers will dump it off to Larry. Larry across the 25, just short of the 30. They're going to mark him out at the 27-yard line. So Rose, the third, gets right next to the first down marker, and it's going to be good enough for a first down. Pick up of 10 for Larry Rose, the third, in the passing game again. Yeah, I like the play, too. That was a nice play, and here we go with tempo. We're just going to keep it moving fast, which I agree with. And now Rose, the third in motion behind Rodgers. He was split out as a wide receiver. Rodgers, 20 of 25 today. He double pumps, completes the pass to Isaiah Lottie, who spins across the 35-yard line, and he's up to the 40. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Yankees to start the third. Lots of time in the pocket there where he's able to look, look the field over and still see Lottie and come back to Lottie and dump the ball off to him. And the thing I like about Lottie right here is so he takes it upfield and watch him try to take her the ball right here. So now he knows in traffic, and there it is, two hands on the ball to make sure it doesn't squeak out of there. Isaiah Lottie has four catches today for 34 yards. In motion, Jonathan Boone to the bottom side of your screen. Right back to the air again. Near side of your screen, Jaleel Scott spinning near midfield. And he's dumped down by... Nigel Lawrence, shy of midfield. Well, if you're not running it well, just go to the air, and that's what the Yankees are doing. Yeah, I think if that's what they give you, you do that. Look at Jill Scott throwing a little spin around move in there. Rodgers will tuck it, and then he dives right back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there just hasn't been a whole lot of activity yeah. in the running game. And Larry Rose III had a really good game on the ground last week against Idaho. And it could be that they've come in and said, look, you're going to do one thing on us. You're, you're not going to be able to run the ball. And we think we can get to uh, Tyler. And they haven't been able to get to him so far. And yeah, now it's third down and three. The Aggies need the midfield stripe. They need the 50. Rodgers will lob it on the sideline. Jaleel Scott is free. Flag is down near the 40. I think Jaleel was held initially too, Danny. At least it looked that way. Yeah, so we're going to have to take a look at if they see the, the hole or if they see Jaleel kind of push off. But it was a nice little fade route in there. He looks everyone off one way and looks back to Jaleel Scott. There's the penalty, and it could go either way, I think. There you go. 
Yeah, it's declined. It goes on to Ryan Mills for holding Julio Scott, who is alone to cover. Hey, I don't blame him. I, I think if you're not, you know, as, as tall as 6'6", as Jaleel, and he's going to get by you somewhere, you may want to stick a hand out there and grab a fistful of jersey. Aggies at the 27. Rogers motions to Huntley. Tyler, three-step drop underneath. Jaleel Scott again, the 6'6", big target. Will dive forward. He's inside the 25. He's down to the 23-yard line, and he gets four. You know, Tyler had several opportunities there. He could have gone to many different uh, receivers that were wide open there, and, and I think when he starts to feel it and he's in the pocket, he's got time. The receiving core we've talked about through the, through the year, great receiving core. You'll find someone open. Rogers playing like a senior right now, directing traffic for the Aggies, motioning towards his wide receivers and his running back, Larry Rose the third. Sixth year senior from Peoria, Arizona. On second down and six. And he's dropped by Daryl Sanji. Sean Brown was there as well for the Jazz. Yeah, Tyler saw the whole time. They were up on the line of scrimmage. He knew they were coming, and uh, you're going to end in man-on-man man -man -man coverage out there. But we just couldn't get anyone open enough where he could throw the ball up there. So we decided to just take it in the middle there. And uh, that's a great job of just getting whatever you can out of that and be ready to fight for another down. So now it's a big third down and eight for the Yaggies. They need the 17-yard line. Rodgers fires to the 15. First down for Greg Hogan inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, you, when you're playing off the receiver, especially a core like uh, New Mexico State's core, who are very quick, and you give Tyler enough time, he will drill the ball in there, and that's what happened there. Greg Hogan does a little hook. He's wide open and just delivers a strike right to him. Second catch today for Hogan, so two catches and more now and seven straight for Greg Hogan. Rose the third, escapes down to the 10-yard line and down to the nine. We'll mark him down to the even a half-yard line. You know, it, it just feels like what a, what a great sport Larry Rose is and what a great person too, but... Larry Rose is just inches away from breaking one of those. I, I think it, you just can't give up on it because you've got to keep him honest, but he's close to breaking one of those wide open. And his next rushing touchdown will tie a school record. 36 career for Larry. He needs 37 to tie Preacher Pilots. Second down and five for the Yankees. Let's see if they go to Larry Rose the third. They're going to pass again. Rogers drops back. He lofts it. It is tipped and nearly intercepted. Tumbling down is Malcolm Bugs, the safety. Yeah, yeah, that's one where Tyler just got locked in one way to the right here. If you look to the left, you'll see at the top of the screen, Rose was wide open up there. Instead, he chose to come down to the bottom here, and there was uh, you got some underneath coverage and a safety over top that came in there, and there was just nothing doing. Rogers was looking for Isaiah Lottie. And once again, it was Bugs who batted it away. Big third down for the Yankees, six of nine. Good conversion rate this afternoon. Rogers fires across the middle, incomplete and intercepted. In the hands of Tobias Moss, his second interception this year. Now this is tough right here, so you deliver a strike, you get it in there, but there's lots of hands flying around there, so hits off his off his leg and bounces up. Nothing. Is that Jeremy Reeves right there who tipped it initially? I think it was. Oh, he laid out nice yeah. on that. Can you give a half interception to Reeves right there? Because, right. I mean, he was able to tip it, and that slowed it down. If he doesn't tip it, Anthony Muse probably has a touchdown. Well, then that's a lot of momentum right there for it. You get a long drive, and uh, that's a big pick right there for and South Alabama. Alabama. And, the and the Jaguars will use Dallas Davis to start the third quarter for them offensively at quarterback. It's been Garvin and Davis splitting action today at the QB position. Davis will hand it off to Carlos Robinson. Robinson gets up to the 25-yard line. He picks up five yards on the rush. Check that. That was Trey Minter, the ball carrier for the Jacks. So they're not going to give up on the run either, so they're going to try to establish the run so they can uh, create a shorter, a shorter second and third down situation. That was a good first down right there. Aggie's got to step up that defensive line again and get it moving. Get us a little energy going. Second down and five yards to go for the Jaguars and junior QB Dallas Davis. Six foot two, 215 out of Panama City, Florida. He slings it and it's intercepted. 
Third turnover forced by the Yankees. Demarcus Owens, his second pick this year. Yeah, you know, from up here, Adam, you can see how that ball kind of drifted away in there. He just didn't feel, look comfortable in the uh, in the pocket there. Got a little pressure, lots of hands up in the air, and he just threw it a little too high. Even though Demarcus Owens sees that ball going up there, that's still a tough catch where he has to get to the top of his apex and pull that thing down. He did a great job right there to get a pick. Put us back into the situation where we can get some points on the board. Davis was looking for David Gardner. Interceptions now for Hanks and Owens, and a recovered fumble for Lomax. And the Aggies only have one turnover themselves. So they forced three, they've only committed one. Aggie ball, good field position when we come back. Adam Young and Danny Knee back with you here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. 13-7, the Aggies lead by a half dozen with 9.40 left in the third. It's Aggie football right around midfield. They will actually start in Jack's territory at the 48-yard line after a Dallas Davis interception picked off by Demarcus Owens. Empty backfield for the redshirt senior from Peoria, Arizona. Heavy pressure from the backside, and that is Bull Barge. What a football name. Yeah, that's a great football name, and he really put the lick to Tyler there. You can see everybody up on the line of scrimmage, and Tyler just held that a little too long there. We just outmanned. They had too many on the line, and you just got to get to someone fast or get rid of the ball because if not, you're going to take a pop. First sack this year for Barge, who is splitting time between Michael linebacker and Stinger linebacker for the Jags. More time here for Rodgers, and that is intercepted. The Jaguars trying to see if it was behind the line of scrimmage. It was incomplete, intended for Isaiah Lotti, who Tyler Rodgers is going after a ton. He's been targeted a bunch today. He has, and it's, it's tough when you get a shot to the back like that where you got to get up and stand in there again and try to make something. Now you just got a, a long third down. Well, you would like to do something with a turnover. It's third down and 20 for the Aggies from their own 41-yard line. Rodgers will dump it off for Rose, and it's incomplete. So now there's some drops here, and we didn't see a whole lot of that from the Aggies in the first half. The offense didn't move the ball great, but there wasn't a whole lot of drops, and now some mistakes. Yeah, it's too bad that you can't take advantage of that turnover where you're midfield, but you, you take a sack, gets back 10, you uh, drop a ball, and uh, all of a sudden puts you back in the punting situation. Those are still good numbers right there for Rodgers, who missed the previous game and a half with a shoulder injury. Teisler will boot it away. Trey Minter is back to receive, and he won't receive this one. Not a good punt there for Peyton Theisler as it trickles out of bounds. So we'll see who's in at quarterback for the Jaguars. Will it be Dallas Davis, who just threw an interception? Or is it going to be the man who started this game, making his third straight start, Cole Garvin? Two quarterbacks being used today for the Jaguars, and they will have the football pretty good field position with 8.53 left here in the third quarter, 13-7. to seven. The Aggies lead by six. Yeah, you know, this This is a, although you have a lead, I'm not sure that I would say that either team really has the momentum because both have uh, come out and kind of gone up and back, a couple turnovers, and it's just like, just not nothing happening on both sides. And so, uh, got to be careful not to let a break happen to give South Alabama a break, and you need a good defensive stand right here. Press box side is really full today here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Opposite side of the field. Good crowd as well. This feels like a UTEP or a UNM home crowd, doesn't it? It does. It, it, good support. I like the support from the community. New Mexico State usually draws a lot more for games against their two rivals at home, UTEP or UNM. And this feels like one of those crowds here today for bowl eligibility. The Aggies trying to go to their first bowl game since 1960. And if the Aggies win today, since Louisiana did lose earlier today, the Aggies would almost be a lock for the Arizona Bowl. You can pretty much pencil that one in. That's where the Aggies would be. They would be in Tucson at the Nova Arizona Bowl. Really wasn't a whole lot to shake out in the Sun Belt today outside of that Louisiana game as far as where the Aggies would be positioned for a bowl game. 
still got a lot of football here, and you got to make sure you take care of business and, and not let that offense get rolling here. So Joey Jones, the head coach of the Jaguars, coaching his final game at South Alabama, will stick with the junior Dallas Davis, who just threw the interception. Davis does have the low touchdown, though, for the Jaguars today, an 11-yard rushing score early on in the second quarter today. Davis under center, thinks the handoff to Minter. He's being chased by Cedric Wilcott. He's still running, and he's hit hard by Terrell Hanks. You know, part of what makes that, uh, other than Terrell Hanks and uh, Cedric giving chase, is the good coverage on the backside by the Aggies. So the defensive backs really stepped up, and they had great coverage. Look, look, looks like a little play action, but there wasn't anyone open, and nothing to do but scramble with the ball to see if you can create something. But by then, you had enough guys come flying up to uh, put a little stick on you right there. It's a one-yard loss for Dallas Davis. It is second down and 11. From the 25-yard line, Rankin Meyer is in motion for the Jags. Davis takes the snap, fires across the middle, incomplete. Broken up there by Ron LaForce, the junior. Well, Ron, Lafo Ron, Ron LaForce comes screaming in on that one. Right across the middle, kind of a skinny post in there, and Ron just jumps up in there and knocks that thing loose. Davis was looking for Jameer Taylor, the senior from Fairburn, Georgia. Third and 11 for the Jaguars. The Aggie defense only allowed 10 points last week. Fewest points allowed all year. They've only allowed seven today. 8.03 left in the third. Shemai Lomax just left the field limping a little bit. Have to wonder if he's injured, if it's serious or anything. And it may force him out of the year in the third quarter. On a third and 11 for Davis and the Jaguars. Initially a catch there for David Gardner, and then he dropped it. That would have been a heck of a grab. That was a heck of a grab right there. If it would have been held on to, but nothing doing. So go to the right side where Jared Phipps comes in, and so you see Jared at the top of the screen, but this is Ron underneath right in the middle. That it was just puts a little pop on him, gets his hand in there, and celebrates. Back-to-back -back pass breakups for LaForce, who really wasn't a contributor out of the gate this year. Coming into the season, I don't think the Aggies thought Ron LaForce would play a ton. Turned into a starter, and he's played a ton, and has had some big games this year. The game against New Mexico, most notably. Corliss Waitman, a high booming punt again to Larry Rose the third, who will let it bounce, and it bounces wow. off the Jaguar. That's a lucky bounce, all right? Otherwise, that thing keeps rolling down. Hit off Quinton Lane. And the Aggies catch a break. The Aggies will have it at the 23-yard line. Trying to add their six-point lead after this. Here. New Mexico State back on offense. Trying to get win number six today and reach that full eligible mark. The Aggies currently 5-6, and 3-4 and four in the Sun Belt, and the Jaguars 4-7 and 3-4 and, three and four in the league. Today's game is sponsored by Farm Bureau Financial Services. Schedule a super check with your agent today to make sure your world is protected. Tyler Rogers waiting on us, waiting on television, and as soon as he hears the officials whistle, the Aggie offense is back to work from the 23 Yard line, not a whole lot at all on the ground today. Before that run there for Rose the third, the Aggies had negative two yards rushing. Yeah, I, I would not have thought that. And there's so many. They were spying him. They're not going to let him get too many. But you would think we'd still be able to create some running lanes somewhere in there. But uh, minus two, or maybe we're at uh, zero now. But you know, on the other side, too, South Alabama's only had seven yards, so there's not much rushing on either side. And Rodgers will go with an empty backfield initially, and then Rose the third to his right after going in motion. Four down linemen for the Jaguars. They rush four. Rodgers fires and completes behind Jonathan Boone. Yeah, that was a safe ball right there. He's going to throw it a little bit behind. A little chatter after, but you know, there was a double coverage, and so you know, I just didn't. I, I like the pass that he got it down in a way, so if he misses, no one can pick it. 
It's hard to tell if these two offenses are just struggling today or if it's two defenses just playing really well. Right. Third and nine for the Aggies from the 24-yard line. Trying to get something moving offensively here in the third quarter midway through. Batted down. Rodgers was looking for Connor Kramer across the middle. And he couldn't get it to him. Yeah, Connor Kramer kind of dragging from the top of the screen down to the bottom here. He's got a big paw up there and knocked that thing up. Good thing he didn't get picked right there. That's what happens when you tip him up and get a pick. That was Jimmy Gibson, the sixth-year senior from Coldwater, Mississippi, who batted it down from his defensive end wolf position. And now Theisler will punt again, and he will punt again to Trey Minter. We have not seen Sam Harris today. Sam Harris is one of the main targets for the Jaguars, and he is also their typical charge, punt returner. New Mexico State. Timeout is called by the Yankees on a punt. I'm not sure if they weren't lined up properly or what happened there. I don't think we had the right personnel in, and so you saw guys running in from the sidelines, and so they had to take a take a timeout in order to get the right uh, right folks on the field. That's a that's a bummer right there. That's not where you want to take your timeouts. So Sam Harris has not been in from what I've seen today. He hasn't been targeted yeah. and he hasn't been out for points. And Harris this year has a team high 41 catches. So you take out Harris, you take out Xavier Johnson, uh, the star running back, the program's all-time leading rusher, who's now missed four straight games. And that's a lot of oomph offensively yeah. for the Jaguars that isn't there. Right. And here they are competing. They're competing well. Sure. Now Theisler will punt, almost blocked. Gets it away to Samori Collier, who is back deep. He backpedals to the 20, and he's tripped up there. That's Terrell Hanks making a play on special teams. Hey, if you have speed, the coach has got to figure out a way to get you on the field so you can affect something on the field. And, and Hanks certainly has the wheels, as you can see right there. Player oh, down but, for the Yankees. Oh, I think man. Theisler was hit. And if Theisler was hit, there's a missed call, right? There are flags down. Let's see if we can see what happened after the kick. I can't see it from here. After the play, personal foul, receiving team number 38. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. So there were flags down, and it's Tequan Robinson who's the guilty party. Theisler's okay as he runs off. Thirteen to seven, probably not the way many people thought this one would go. Probably thought we'd have some more points at this juncture with under seven left in the third. South Alabama finishing off their season, regardless of today's result. The Aggies, with the win, would become bowl eligible and would head to a bowl game for the first time since 1960. And we'll flip quarterbacks again. It's Cole Garvin, the man who started this game. And because of the penalty, the ball is on the 10-yard line. Garvin, who's done this a bunch, fakes the toss, keeps it himself, and he gets a block ahead, and he's up near the 25-yard line. That, that's, a, that's a keeper all the way where you're just going to fake that pitch and just keep it in there. And so you see the backer, you see McQuaker kind of right there, 41, just missed that. I don't know if he couldn't see him coming through or he couldn't shed his block, but... It creates a big lane between the second and the third level that get extra yards. And I'm sure the Yankees didn't expect Garvin to be the guy who used his legs today. They thought Dallas Davis would be that guy. First down and 10 for the Jaguars, and they go to the ground. They haven't had a whole lot of the ground today either. It is Carlos Robinson, the second. A senior from Enterprise, Alabama, who only had 21 carries coming in. And he only had one career carry coming into the year. Yeah, they certainly had some running back woes with uh, hurt, everyone getting hurt. And uh, that uh, makes it hard to get any consistency in the, in the running back field. And after a three-yard Robinson run, it's second down and seven for Garvin in South Alabama. Aggie showing blitz. 
Pat to the ground, and the Aggies right there to meet up. To Savia Reese, Terrell Hanks, Shane Jackson, a host of Aggies. Host, a host of Aggies, and I see Stoddy Bradley in there to kind of start that whole thing as he came off the edge. He just comes screaming off your edge to the right there, number nine in your screen, and just created him. He had to create another path to run, and a lot of other crimson jerseys there to help finish it off. It's third and seven. USA needs the 34 yard line. Three receivers out wide for the junior Cole Garvin. Whistles the pass to Jamarius Way, who makes the catch for a first down for the Jaguars. Transfer in from Ellsworth Community College in Iowa, the same Juco school that produced Jaleel Scott. Little deep in route right here where you see time in the pocket. Shamad is playing off a little bit and easy pitch and catch. Robinson still the running back over Trey Minter. Minter was the starter today. He's been the starter the last couple of weeks. McQuaker coming for the backside, and Leon McQuaker has his second sack this year. Also his second in as many weeks. So he had a back that was same back, and that was his guy to pick up McQuaker. But you see McQuaker says, okay, fine. If you're still in there, he puts his head down and lunges forward, and he goes right around him. Talk about a guy who just kind of stayed the course. Wasn't yeah. playing much at all. He was on special teams, and now the final two weeks of the regular season, he's one of the guys at linebacker who's playing a big role. Second down and 16 for Garvin, who rolls to his left. Pressure came. Jacinda Reese was all over him. The Yankees want intentional grounding. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside they won't the get it. box, and the ball will went beyond the line of scrimmage. Not sure what he was about yeah. to announce, other than I have nothing to announce. There was no flag, and the referee, Marshall Lewis, was about to say something never did, so it's third down and 16. Maggie defense looking for another stop. More pressure. Oh. My goodness. Terrell oh. Hanks. Did Adam, did you see how fast he was coming up? I know you, you you were watching the same thing I did. As soon as that thing started to form, Terrell Hanks ex knew exactly what was coming on. There he comes right there. He wasn't fooled one second, and he came screaming in. Big tackle. The pass was complete to the running back, Carlos Robinson, but that was really a bailout pass there by Cole Garvin, just trying to get rid of it. Jacinda Reese applied the pressure. It's a loss of five of the play, and it brings up fourth down and 21 for the Jaguars. Rose the third back to receive again on the punt from Corliss Waitman. Calls for a fair catch, and he takes it inside the 20, and it's at the 19-yard line. Heck of a punt. It's a punt at 50 from Waitman. Aggie offense back to work again, ahead by six. With you here at Aggie Memorial Stadium, as you can see, a big pass and catch from Tyler Rogers to Jason Huntley. Yeah, Jason Huntley came out of the backfield there, and they had a they had a linebacker chasing, and he got caught up. Tyler saw that the linebacker got caught up, and he just dumped it out to him there, and just Jason Huntley on the edge. Great wheels. He's going to make you pay. Under two left here in the third. The Aggies all the way down to the 23 yard line. Aggies moving here. Rogers back to throw. In and out of the hands of his intended target, Jaleel Scott. Yeah, lots of pressure on Scott, so you know that Scott's going to take a, a hit because they're watching him the whole way. And so he does a little quick hook in there and just gets his arm in there, wasn't able to pull that down. Rose the third back in the game now on second down and 10. Five down lineman, heavy pressure here from South Alabama. Rogers finds Larry Rose the third of the 15, oh, and he's man. taken down from behind. Taken down by Jimmy Gibson. Yeah, Jimmy Gibson saved a, a touchdown. 
Great call. Here comes the blitz. You dump off a quick little screen into the blitz. No one back there to cover. So here comes Rose. One guy to beat. Oh, man, and he pulls him down. Rose gets 11, and it is first down and 10 from the 12. Clock moving, 110 left to go here in the third quarter. Aggies trying to make this a two-score game. Rodgers, he's going to run. Takes the toss, tumbles to the 10. They'll give him just one yard to the 11 where they mark it. I think Rose out of the backfield um, on his uh, reserve route kind of on the left was wide open, but he couldn't get all the way there. Had to step up into the pocket and, and uh, felt the pressure and just going to go get a few yards anyway. No scoring so far in the third quarter. We did not have any scoring in the first either. All the points in the second quarter today. 13 to 7 Aggies. Pressure from the front side incomplete. Thrown towards the knees of Larry Rose the third. And it's going to be a big third down and eight for the Aggies. Yeah, that's tough right there. He, pressure on Tyler and he has to get rid of the ball. And uh, get the ball out in front and down low. And just a little too low. Aggies will bring in their big tight end, Bryce Roberts, here on a third down and eight. Look for him. Bryce this year has only caught eight balls, but he has three touchdowns receiving. And Aggies with just two wide receivers on the top side of your screen. And Isaiah Lottie bunched on the bottom side of the formation. Rodgers had some time early, then he's dropped. He's dropped for a sack. And it's Ford, Wade Ford, the senior from Ocala, Florida. Just not enough time for Tyler. So he's in the pocket. He's looking. He's looking. Lots of pressure. Just nowhere to go with the ball. And that's the end of three quarters. All right. Now the ball is placed at the 22-yard line. So it would be a 39-yard field goal for Dylan Brown. Let's see what the Yankees do. When we come back for the fourth quarter, one quarter left for bowl eligibility. We're getting ready to start the fourth quarter here today at Aggie Memorial Stadium, 13 to seven, which was also our halftime score. No points in the first, no points in the third. And we're about to start the fourth. Bowl eligibility on the line for the Aggies, trying to become bowl eligible for the first time since 02. And then trying to go to their first bowl game since 1960. 57 years, the longest bowl drought in the country. It is fourth and 20. The Aggies are at the 22 of South Alabama. So this is a 39-yard try for Dylan Brown, who's made two field goals today from 30 and 32. And this would tie his season long. He will kick it out of the hold of wide receiver and former quarterback, senior Connor Kramer. Brown trying to go three for three today. This would also make it a two-possession game. Right down the middle. Dylan Brown doing his job today. Hey, that's an important three right there, so that's a great job. Especially after last week having a couple uh, deflected where you still have to have confidence to come back and kick the same way. Don't worry about everything. So great job right there. Got to have the snap, the hold, and the kick. Danny, there really hasn't been many games this year where the Yagis have needed Dylan Brown to make some big hits. Yeah. But today he's had to. Today he's had to, and he, and he did it, and he's done it, right? The young man from Chandler, Arizona, transfer in from Phoenix College. Three for three today, 11 of 15 for the year, making a big impact on what could be a program-changing day for Aggie football. I, I like kickers, too, because you can kick it, then you get all the high fives, and you're like, yeah, absolutely, and then you go get your ball cap, and you put your ball cap on and says, let's play football. Let's keep going here. Give me another try, guys. I'm hot. And for Dylan Brown, he doesn't have to kick off. Parker Davidson yeah, does Parker the kickoff, Davidson so does he just kind of chills. His job's done. All right, now it's up to the defense, though, right? He did a shocking twist. 
probably the unit you want in the field right now. That's the unit that's playing their best. It's true. Davidson just wow. sneaks it inside the pylon, so nice. it will be at the 25 for the Jaguars. Getting a little chippy out on the field, too. There just hasn't been a time in recent years where this Aggie defense could go out and win you a football game. And if this one stays around this score, you may see at the end that defense won us the football game. Yeah. Quarterback carousel continues. Cole Garvin, the man right now for the Jaguars. Yeah, so I thought the plan was for, for South Alabama is to play both and then figure out who's got the hot hand in the fourth and go with them, and I'm not sure who that would be. Garvin today, 12 of 20, one interception, no touchdowns, 108 passing, and this one pinballs oh. around, incomplete, intended for Jamarius Way. Yeah, Jamarius Way was open. He had lots of room to run as well, but boy, he delivered that with a little heat, didn't he? And that was a fastball he darted in there. Well, if you look at the numbers, I guess Garvin's had the edge slightly today, although Davis has run it pretty well, and he does yeah. have the rushing touchdown. And it's just a little behind him, too, and that makes it tough. Trey Mincer, the running back. Garvin to throw. Quick toss to the outside, complete this time to Jamarius Way. To the 31-yard line, looks like he gets six. And it's going to be third down and four. Shmod Lomax comes screaming in there, nice coverage. He sees him kind of pull up, and he just screams in there and says, yeah, you can catch it, but that's all you get. So that's a great job by Shimon. Big third down right here. The Aquires today, only three of nine on a third down. This Aggie defense has been sensational. Aggie show heavy pressure. Garvin doesn't have a whole lot of time. He completes the pass, though, to Kawan Baker. There is a flag down near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think what happens when you get up on the line of scrimmage and you start darting in and out with linebackers and showing lots of pressure, looks like that could be a, a combo high-low block right there, which is illegal. Ball right in front of Lon Force, who puts in a hit anyway on him. But let's see what, let's see what they have to, have to say about it. There is no foul for a chop block. One blocker was not engaged with the defender. The other came in low. This is a legal block. Zolta plays the first down. Okay, there you go. No foul. No foul. Coach Baziani, he's got to dial up some lots of pressure. Lots of pressure on that last one. Made a handoff to Trey Minter. To Sammy Reese right there. So is Deshante Lloyd. Here's Terrell Hanks. Two, four, six. We have another Aggie walk out of the screen there. That's seven, seven crimson jerseys on the ball. That's that attack defense, you know, from the day one when, when we saw him come out against Arizona State. That attack defense has really been the, the one thing that they've relied on, and uh, it's really done well for them this year. No gain, second down and 10. Just two receivers out wide for the Jaguars. So Garvin only has two options out right. He throws it just incomplete. Jamarius Way had a beat on it. He dove and he could not come up with it. And boy, boy Cole took a pop too because there was a, a late blitz that also occurred in there. And with all these blitz and he leaves you in one-on-one -on -one coverage. So see, there's McQuaker coming in, gets a pop in there. He did have him beat though. That's uh, that's tough right there. That was Hanks in coverage here. Well, Sam Harris, the wide receiver who leads the Jaguars and catches for the year. And we haven't seen him today. Third down and 10 for South Alabama. Garvin tosses and he completes it to a tumbling Malik Stanley for a first down. You know, we continue with the pressure. In that case, he just couldn't get there. And he's been able to deliver some right on the mark. 
And so lots of pressure. He knows it's coming. He steps up into the pocket and delivers it right on the mark. Perkins on the coverage there and just pushes him out. Jaguars into Aggie territory from the 44 now on the first down and 10. Three wide receivers set for the junior quarterback, Cole Garvin. Garvin, quick toss, complete, great throw to Jordan McRae. McRae across the 20-yard line near the 15. What a bullet there from Cole Garvin. Yeah, you're back in the zone coverage, and they find that seam for the, for the two-deep zone, and he delivers a dart in there. Makes a great catch, missed the tackle right away, was able to get some extra yards in there, so you can see delivers that dart right in the middle. First down and 10 for the 17 now. The Jaguars driving for the first time in a while. They fake the handoff to Minter. Garvin looking, and his pass is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Andrew Rankemeyer. Thought maybe he was going to have Minter open in the end zone, but yeah, the yeah. Aggies with good coverage. Right. There was a lot of things going on with that play, too, right? So there was a lot of uh, receivers everywhere, play action, kind of late blitzing on the quarterback, and nothing there. Kind of see him pull and kind of look out there, and uh, just threw it behind him. That was Leon McQuaker who was covering Trey Minter. It is second down and 10. For USA. Garvin will throw again. And it's caught for a touchdown. Jordan McRae, his first receiving touchdown this year. First touchdown through the air today for the Jaguars, and it's the seventh touchdown pass this year for Cole Garvin. Try to get a little pressure on him, but just couldn't happen and couldn't get turned around fast enough to really make anything. So this one gets a little more interesting. Back to a one possession game. Gavin Patterson on for the point after. And he knocks it through. It is a two point game, 16 to 14. The Aggie lead is cut to a deuce. Well, well, well. We wouldn't have it any other way, would yeah, we, Danny? Yeah, that, you know, um, I know a lot of people thought they would come out here and post a lot of points, and it's just not the case. It's a close one. Final 12 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Maggie is ahead by two final 12 minutes. Today's game is sponsored by Farm Bureau Financial Services. Schedule a super check with your agent today to make sure your world is protected. First career receiving touchdown for Jordan McRae as he connects with Cole Garvin. Garvin's seventh touchdown pass this year. And now it is 16 to 14. And Gavin Patterson will kick off to the Yagis and Jason Huntley who will take a knee probably wisely in his it end was, zone. It almost turned into a disaster right there. Right? <laughs> hey, so here's the thing. So defense been playing well. They came down, put a big drive together, put points on the board. This is where your offense now has to step up and answer. And I know our defense has been one where we've really stood behind, but it, it didn't happen. Here you are, you got a two point lead. That's not enough. You gotta get out there and you gotta make it go. Tyler Rogers today, 29 of 42 in his final home game for 356. One touchdown, one pick. The Aggies have only committed one turnover today. And they have forced three. It is Rose the third in the backfield. Kramer in motion. The Aggies with four wide receivers. Rose looks left and he fires to Larry Rose the third. And Rogers completes that pass to Larry who gets out of bounds just short of the 35 yard line. Larry Rose the third today, eight catches for almost 100 yards. Really has like receiver type numbers, Danny, because you look at the ground, eight carries, just 14 for Larry. Yeah, it's been all about the air right now. Rose gets eight, and now Rose to the ground. He dances around to midfield. Larry Rose the third into Jaguars territory. Well, wow, that's tough. Just about we talked about what a, what a great receiver is, and it's all about the air, and, and here he is, comes back with a little zone read in the middle. Larry Rose breaks it to the second level, third level, lots of extra yards. 
Well, if there's one guy who could put the team on his back in the final 12 minutes for bowl eligibility, it's the senior, Larry Rose the third. Roger steps up in the pocket, completes the pass to Connor Kramer, who dives across the 35-yard line, all the way down to the 33 for Connor Kramer. And that will move the chains again. Kramer with his first catch today after a career-high five catches last week against Idaho. And Kramer, through his uh, this career, this senior year, where he's played receiver, he's made some great catches. Aggies from the 33 on first down and 10. Rodgers, the three-year starter, unleashes again. And it's caught again, this time by Isaiah Lotti. <laughs> I like that Tyler's getting rid of the ball quick instead of sitting in and reading everything. You're going to get the first look. It looks good enough, and you're going to pump it in there and, and be done with it. Second down and five yards for Rodgers and the Aggies, and the flag flies, and the Jaguars are pointing to the Aggie line, which made a bunch of mistakes early. Three false starts in the first Ball half. Start. Offense, number 77. And five this yards. one is on Isaac second McLean, down. his second penalty on a false start today. McLean, the right tackle from California in his first year with the Aggies after transferring in from Santa Barbara Community College. Four receivers bunched up top side of your screen. Now the Aggies will move Huntley in motion in the backfield. And the target for Rodgers is Julio Scott, who was held and smothered and spun around. And I don't think the Aggies like that, the fans. No. Yeah. That's a tough one. Let's take a look at it here and see if he jumped in there or if he timed it just perfectly. You just can't tell from that angle. So that will bring up third down and ten. A big third down here for the Yankees, ahead by only two. The Rose, the third run was a big one. Can the Yankees capitalize? Rodgers completes it to Connor Kramer, and it looks like he has a first down, Danny. Maybe by a half yard he has it. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice catch right there by uh, Kramer, and Kramer knows where that first down, those sticks are, and so he's out there reaching and trying to get to that first down. Or he is right across the middle of your screen. He sees it, he knows he's got to turn and get upfield. That's a good job right there. Two catches on this drive for the young man who grew up 20 minutes from Mobile, where South Alabama is located. Rodgers no. hit as he throws, and he underthrows Jaleel Scott. Double coverage out there. Jeremy Reeves and DeRyan Mills out there for the Jacks. Yeah, that had disaster written all over it, didn't it? And I know what Tyler was thinking is get rid of the ball. Don't take a sack or it's going to drive you further back. But you, you just can't throw the ball up in the air like that because that is a, a free pick. And we're just lucky we got away with that one right there. And Tyler did take a pop, so... Um, didn't catch it, though, but here we are, second down. And a timeout is called by New Mexico State as they will talk things over on second down and 10. Charge timeout, New Mexico State. This should be a 30-second timeout. 30 seconds. Aggies only have one timeout left here in the fourth quarter with 9.41 left to go. And that was a big third down conversion with Connor Kramer out there. That Danny. was key. That was really key. And here you are at, at second down, and you got to get 10. So uh, this may be where, where you may want to have four down territory, right? Because now your clock is coming down, and you got a, a two point. So if you kick a field goal, that at least gives you yeah. a little bit of room, but you know, not much. So this will be tough to see what we can do, but you got second down here to see if they can make something happen. Aggies only have one touchdown today. That was in quarter number two. Tyler Rogers to Anthony Muse from nine yards away. Three made field goals for sophomore place kicker Dylan Brown. Rogers 33 of 48 for 391. Nobody blocked a man on the outside for the Jaguars, and then a monster hit for the linebacker, Daryl Sanji on Isaiah Lotti. Rodgers had to get rid of it. He did, and they had everyone up on the line of scrimmage, and so it was a, a come get you with everything, and um, 
Just tried to get a little screen underneath, and it was well read, and man, he was popped. Finesse Middleton, the Louisville transfer, forced the quick throw from Rodgers there. No loss, though. It's third down and 10. The Aggies need the 13-yard line. Larry Rose the third. We'll get up to the 17. The Aggies are going to be four yards short. Decision-making time, or is this an easy decision for Doug Martin? I don't think he even blinked, did he? I think they called in the next play. Mm. Clock moving, under nine left in the fourth. It is fourth and four. Timeout, Jaguars. Big play right here. First charge timeout, South Alabama. This would be a 30 second timeout. Please reset the game clock. Well, the Eight Aggies today, 0 of 1 on fourth down. For the year, they've only attempted nine. They're four of nine on fourth down for the year. It's fourth and four from the 17. What do you think here, Danny? Yeah, this is a tough one. I, I think you um, I, I think you go for it. I think you, you're, on, you're on fourth, you got two. Um, the last defensive series, your, your defense is playing tough, but they did go down the field pretty easily on that defense. So there's some adjustments you gotta make. So I think you gotta play and try to get seven in there to, to get a lead. So you go for it on fourth. There could be a lot of big plays here in the final 837. This is one of those. Fourth and four. Kramer in motion across the formation. Huntley's the running back. Roger is going to Jaleel Scott. And he made the catch. Or did he? They're going to say he was out of bounds in the end zone. Willie on the field is an incomplete pass. Ball's turned over on downs. Let's see what happens here. Take a look at it as he throws a fade back into the corner there with Jaleel. I don't... Why is that... Oh, it jarred loose at the end. There oh, you go. Oh, did it? Yeah, didn't see the ball pop uh, loose. If he hangs on, Danny, it's a touchdown. Yeah. He got a foot in. He got the naked eye. So there is a catch. He's get His yeah. one foot is in. Now he's got to secure the ball. Let's see. Yeah. You know, I, I thought at least they might go for a, a quick quick hitter to get that first down instead of, of everything. But um, if they get the matchup they wanted, then maybe that's just the decision they have to go with. And so uh, so now it's on the defense. So now here it is, 832. Defense brought you here. Big plays. Let's see what they can do. Cole Garvin, the quarterback, after the turnover on downs. Another rifle toss, this one to Jamarius Way. Way today with five receptions to pace the Jaguars. You know, Way's not a, a small guy either. He is 6'4", 215, and so he's a, he's, a, he's a load out there to bring down. At the 27, first down and 10 for South Alabama. Final eight minutes. The Jaguars throwing a ton underneath. Jamarius Way again. He's body slammed down by Leon McQuaker and Dalton Harrington there to assist. Gain of three. Getting a little chippy on that field looks like right there. But you know, um, lots of composure in the in the offensive backfield. He steps up there and delivers a nice pass. And the defense is trying to get to him as as best they can, but they haven't been able to apply direct pressure to the quarterback. Haven't been able to get to him, I should say. Second down and seven from the 30. The Aggies rush for Garvin completes another pass. This one to Jordan McRae, who caught one for a touchdown earlier. First down again for the Jags. They're moving now, and Cole Garvin appears to be the guy. Yeah, and you, you got to be able to play some uh, coverage. That's been a, a weak spot for us is the coverage in the secondary, so you, you need to step it up and be able to make some plays here as they're just marching down the field. 
at the 49-yard line after the 19-yard hookup. Garvin will air it out again. Wide open is Jamarius Way. And he's wrestled down initially by Perkins. He gets out of two tacklers. Jamarius Way tackled from behind by Ron LaForce. Broken coverage. You know, if you look at it, you get a couple Aggies that are just in the same territory, kind of just picking up the same guy, and you leave someone wide open. And just couldn't bring him down. Perkins just couldn't finish him up, and he wasn't about to fall down. So now it's first down and goal from the nine-yard line for South Alabama. Trey Mentor in the backfield with Garvin. Aggie's showing pressure. Pressure comes, pass incomplete. Intended for Kawan Baker. Shaman Lomax on the cover. Getting a little tough right now, right? Got to make a stop. Got to make it happen. Second and goal from the nine-yard line. Great coverage there by Lomax. And off to Minter. Minter trying to bounce to the outside, and the Aggies get him. Ron LaForce wrestles him out of bounds. It's a good thing LaForce came in there to finish that because the first time he just kept running right through the tackle was going to turn that into some good positive yardage, and Ron LaForce from the safety spot comes screaming in there. So right there, good pressure by Stadi Bradley on the outside, runs past Shane Jackson, and LaForce finishes it off. Minter loses one, and for Joey Jones and the Jaguars, it is now third and goal for the 10. There's Jordan McRae, who caught the touchdown pass earlier in the fourth quarter. Garvin rolling right, heavy pressure, he fires, and it is incomplete. They had Malik Steeler there, so was Jordan McRae, Ron LaForce, and Demarcus Owens covering well in the end zone. And Garvin's, luckily, he got rid of it. Yeah, good pressure here. So you see him coming from every angle, and he delivers a pass to that corner here. And let's see what happens. I thought it was out by way out, but... So now it's a 27-yard field goal for the most efficient kicker in the Sun Belt. Gavin Patterson, 15 of 18 this year. And now Joey Jones is out talking to the referee, Marshall Lewis. I think, they, I think he wants him to look at that play again. What do you think they could be looking at there, Danny? Yeah, I think he felt like he, he got that foot in bounds okay. on that on that play, even though um, I wasn't sure if he caught it or not. I couldn't really tell, but it looks like he he um, he got up and said, yeah, I had that all the way here, Second so let's look right at the very end here. South Alabama, this will be a 30-second time. You can see it. So, But see, he, he stepped out of bounds, right? So he's got to – but he didn't catch it. It was – wow. Yeah, Joey Jones was talking to the referee, Marshall Lewis. And it Running doesn't on the field appear they're reviewing pass. this on the field. Previous play is under further review. And now they will. So now they will review it. It took them a while to start the review. And there's Joey Jones, the head coach of the Jaguars. Coaching his final game at South Alabama. Ninth year, he's the only head coach in program history. He's only been a college coach for 10 years. Never a college assistant, was a high school coach previously. Before coming to South Alabama, spent one year at Division III Birmingham Southern, where he restarted their program. Then he started up the Jaguars program. He's a Mobile native who played at Alabama. And he's asking for this play to be reviewed. It's 
It's like the ball disappears here, Danny. I'm not even sure a receiver had control. I think around the force had his paws on it as well. Yeah. It's hard to tell here, so let's see if this will give us a better angle. So, first of all, you get one receiver that steps out of bounds, so he can't catch it, right? Because he can't be the first one to touch it again. But he didn't catch it. It was, I think they're thinking it's Malik Stanley there, 16, who pulled it down. Oh. And see that right foot? They're saying he's in, but I don't know if he had the ball. After a review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. There you go. Highlands over to the Jaguars sideline, and yeah. they thought they were to get that call reversed. Yeah. When we saw the replay the first time, I thought no way. Yeah. But looking at it a few other times, it's like wait okay, a minute. maybe. Well, well, yeah, wait a minute. Joey Jones had everybody thinking there, right? So now Gavin Patterson will try from 27. Most makes this year in the Sun Belt, the most efficient kicker as well. 15 of 18. Out of the hold of punter Corliss Waitman. This to give the Jaguars a lead. It was a low snap, and the kick is good. Good recovery there by Corliss Waitman Ooh. on a really low snap. I think it may have skipped to him. So the Jaguars take a 17-16 lead. 10 unanswered for the Jags. Can the Yankee offense recover? We'll find out next. Rodgers will air it out again. Rodgers wide open across the middle is Isaiah Lottie, who's across the 35-yard line. And Lottie is up to the 39. Yeah, First big, down. Big pass right there. That's Tyler scrambling around, steps up in the pocket to find more time, scoots to his left, finds Isaiah wide open across the middle there. The Aggies get 20 on the play. What a great day for Isaiah Lottie, the redshirt sophomore out of Denver. Deep pass, incomplete, wide right on Connor Kramer. Second down and 10. I think he had the matchup that he was kind of looking for, but he was throwing it. Uh, Kramer was looking one way, and Tyler laid the ball out on the other side, and it just couldn't get his head around fast enough. Isaiah Lottie today, six catches, 39 yards. Nine wow. catches each for Scott and Larry Rose, the third out of the backfield. Jaleel has 134 receiving yards. Pressure coming from Riley Cole. Rogers fires across the middle. Two guys there, and it's incomplete. Jaleel Scott was right there. There was crossing guys offensively for the Aggies across the middle. Yeah, it's too bad, and the ball looked like it maybe went right towards the middle there. Let's take a look and see who had the beat on it. Looks like Scott tried to make the play, yeah. and it hit his hands, but just couldn't pull it down. So now it's third down and 10 for the Aggies. And not a whole lot of time left to play with. Final four minutes plus. Big play right here with the Aggies trailing by one. 7 of 15 today on a third down. Receiver open, bobbled. Was it caught in one? Yeah. Jonathan Boone bobbled it initially. Woo! I was wondering, he was getting close to the sidelines, but I saw the official signal that it was a catch, so let's see what happens here. He breaks out on a quick out towards the sidelines. And man, pulls it down. Big third down right there. There's a good angle. <laughs> Jonathan Boone just snatched it. First and 10 for the Yagis in Jaguars territory. Rose this third, split out wide left as a wide receiver right now. Rogers underneath. It is caught by Anthony Muse, who caught a touchdown pass earlier. He gets up to the 41 yard line. The Yagis get six in its second down and four. You know, it's just everything you've got. Empty backfield, put them all out there. Hold as long as you can on that line of scrimmage and give Tyler enough time to find someone. The 
Rodgers, three-step drop. Offensive line doing a really good job. Throws a strike to Greg Hogan, who slips at the 29-yard line, but he gets 12, and it's a first down again. Nice pattern. Nice pattern by, by Greg Hogan right there. Tyler's looking the field over, sees him, and just delivers in there. Not much more you can do that, so he's just going to sit down. That's a great job. Take care of the football. First down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Rose the third to the right of Rogers. Four wide receivers for the Aggies. Now five wide receivers. Rose in motion. Rogers rolling right. Tyler Rogers has some time, and then he throws it out of bounds. The closest man was Julio Scott, second down and 10. Had a lot of a lot of receivers in the pattern. Got five five guys out there, but no one close enough to him. And the guys that were close enough to him since he was scrambling to the right were well covered. Nothing he could do with the ball. And good decision to get rid of the ball, throw it out of bounds. Final game of the season for South Alabama today, regardless of the result. The Yankees trying to make a bowl game for the first time in 57 years. They need a win to do it. Inside handoff to Jason Huntley. Jason Huntley tumbles to the 20, and Jason Huntley has a first down. Just about the time when we think, ah, they've given up on the run. And we're going to give it to a little stretch play to Jason Huntley and let him get out there and see what he can make happen. And got very close to that first down. I thought maybe he had it, but maybe he's just a couple of yards he's short. He's a half there. yard short. Oh, that's close. Half yard short, the Aggies still in shotgun. Third down and a half yard. Rodgers will keep it, and he has it. Wow. Good decision. It was a good decision. I thought he was going to hand the ball off, and it was going to be very tough yardage right there. But he keeps it and quickly darts in there for that first down and just dives at it. That's a great job to know where you are to get that first down. Under two left. Rodgers telling the crowd to quiet. He doesn't want any noise. He wants to be able to relay the plays to his teammates. Rose the third, the running back for the Aggies. That's Muse in motion left to right. Four wide receivers for NM State. Rogers, backside pressure, lost it to the end zone. Oh. Incomplete intended for Isaiah Lottie. He had him too. Problem is, is it he, as he rolling out of the pocket, it's tough, tough throw to make when you're when you're scrambling and you're running to the right. And he just put a little too much on it. That was Bull Barge with the backside pressure on Rodgers. Now the Yankees are in field goal range right now, and all they realistically need here is a field goal. A minute 27 left. Rose the third. Larry Rose the third on his feet. He's inside the 10. Rose the third down to the 7. He gets 10. That's a first down. Adam, you said... Rose will take it, put it on his shoulders. He'll make it happen. There it is right there. He gets the ball. Nice little hole in there. Got to say that offensive line, those hosses up front, we don't give them enough love, as you say. Yeah. How about that? That was a great job. They're a half yard short again. It's third down and a half yard again for the Yankees, just like the play a few plays ago. And Joey Jones has to run to the field oh. for a timeout. So the spot was a half yard short for a first down. We'll break third and a half yard after this. It's the All-American running back, Larry Rose, the third. It is third down and one for the Yaggies. Third and one, 17 to 16, South Alabama leads by only one point. You brought up a good point, Danny. The Yaggies exclusively work out of the shotgun. So yeah. a situation like here isn't ideal for them if they're in the shotgun. Right, right. Hey, I, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of passionate or feeling good about it. Get him under the center and just do quarterback sneak, even on the sideline count. Just sneak him in there. All you need to have. Final minutes. Rose the third is the running back. It's third and one. The Aggies go to the All American. He tries to fight for the first down. Depends on the spots. Tyler Rogers trying to motion first down. Well, I thought he, I, from the first look, it looks like he, he got it. They bumped into each other. But see right there, it looks like he got the first down. But the mark that came in from the... 
Of course they're going to measure it. And it comes down to this, 52 seconds left. The Yankees don't have it. It's a fourth down. They'll probably kick. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me, Danny? Nee? Wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. 52 seconds left. Well, they haven't been to a bowl game here in 57 years. Got a fresh set of downs. So why not have to watch that? The chain game come out for a measurement. First in goal, 46 seconds left. They go to the senior, Jaleel Scott, incomplete. Coverage from DeRyan Miles. The fade, this has been the combo that's done so well, and there it is right there. And Oh my oh. goodness, he almost made the catch with one hand. Oh man. You go right back to that, Danny? I, I don't know if you do or not. I don't, I kind of like, I kind of like emptying it out and um, find someone crossing across the middle, but that's the most dangerous place in the middle of the field. Second down and goal, final 40 seconds. Rogers rolling right, scanning the field. He fires, it's caught. Connor Kramer, touchdown, New Mexico State. Connor Kramer, we talk about the hands, and Connor Kramer just did not give up on the play, nor did Tyler Rogers. Nothing going here. Look at those hosses blocking up front. Lots of time. Connor Kramer sees he's in trouble. He makes a break back to the end zone, the middle of the end zone, and delivers a nice pass. He had to reach out for it, a little diving action, but Connor Kramer secures it. Go. New Mexico State has taken a lead with 32 seconds left with bowl eligibility on the line. You know, Adam, I saw this day going so many different directions in so many ways, but I did not see it going this way. And there it is one more time. Tyler scrambles to the right, doesn't see anything. Connor saw that he was in trouble. He was in the corner of the end zone and he broke back across the middle of the end zone, diving catch. Wow. Back in the summer, Connor Kramer was still a collegiate quarterback. Doug Martin and Connor talked. They wanted him to move to wide receiver. There really wasn't room for him at quarterback. They wanted to find a way to use him, Danny. They didn't want him to sit on the bench because he was a backup quarterback. Well, they found a position for him at wide receiver. And now on December 2nd, Connor Kramer hauls in the biggest pass of his life for his second touchdown reception this year. And here they go for two to give the Yagis a seven-point advantage. Stepped out of bounds, I think. There is a flag, though. That's good. There is no foul for illegal touching. The ball was caught out of bounds, incomplete. The try is no good. Kick off. So the score will hold at 22-17 with 32 seconds left. Well, that was a 15-play drive, 83 yards, 443. And now it comes to this with 32 seconds. The defense has to stand up. on the field was that there was no illegal touching as the pass was caught out of bounds. And you know Previous Adam, it's going to start with, with the kickoff. you got to have if your special teams have ever needed to step up, it's now. You know, it would be nice to kick it right through the right through the end zone, but you can get whatever you can. Here's, the, here's another look at that, and you can see that he steps out, and then you can't be the same player that comes in and touches the ball first after stepping out. Now, if you convert that two-point conversion, it certainly makes you feel a lot better about yourself, but 
A field goal wouldn't do the Jaguars any good at this point. They need a touchdown yeah. to take a lead. New Mexico State trying to win the longest bowl drought in college football. 1960 was the last time the Yaggies were in a bowl. A win today would give the Yaggies six. It would give them bowl eligibility. And it would more than likely put them in the Arizona Bowl on December 29th. So, so they're checking this out right now to, yeah. to make sure the call was correct. South Alabama in the second half, they've had drives. The first drive is interception. The second, they had to punt. Third, they had to punt. The fourth, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete. No legal touching. Kickoff. So he's saying that it wasn't. It was uh, the call was right on the field, but the fourth fourth possession was a 17 uh, uh, 17 yard touchdown, and the, and the fifth was a field goal. So the last two drives they put points on the board. This is going to be a very important 32 seconds right here. Junior Parker Davidson will kick off. Kawan Baker back deep, along with Quinton Lane for South Alabama. It's a low squibber, and it bounces out of bounds. So the Jaguars will get really, really good field position. Like you said, Danny, you were hoping they would just boot it out of the end zone, right? <laughs> yeah, and I think what Coach is thinking here is that Free if you can't bounds. boot it out of the end zone. Number 24, five yards. Redo the kickoff. Oh, he's going to have him re-kick it? Yeah, they'll replay the kickoff yeah. here. And but I think, Coach, what he's thinking is, look, let's not send it back too deep. And if you can't clear the end zone and they set up a return, and by chance they, they come up with some wild play that, that scores, that's not the way you want to end it. It looks like Dalton Harrington's kind of limping and gimping a bit there. But what Coach is thinking, let's squib it, let's cover, and... They don't have a chance to set up a return. However, now you go back farther and kick it again. Baker and Lane deep for the Jaguars. And here comes the boot from Parker Davidson. That one a little more aggressive. Returnable, though, for Kawan Baker at the five-yard line. Kawan Baker, a backwards pass to Quinton Lane. So they're reversing the fields on the Aggies. And Lane, if he doesn't get out of bounds, may have another 10, 15 yards there. Not a bad idea by the Jaguars. Yeah, I think the I, Aggies expected that. Yeah, I think there was someone over there. They were, their job is safety, right? So he comes down on the right side, and he makes sure no one is coming all the way around. you got to get out of there. Nothing good can happen over there. And... And, uh, yeah, so his job is to sit tight and make sure you're looking for a reverse or anything else. That was a throwback. Certainly a great play to go for. Now what it did do, Danny, is it took eight seconds off the clock. Cole Garvin in a quarterback for the Jaguars. Ball is at the 27-yard line. Jaguars will have to go the distance and score a touchdown to win this football game. So now the, the interesting thing is do you, do you drop deep or do you get the quarterback? Garvin on first down, goes towards the sideline. It is caught. David Gardner will get out of bounds and stop the clock with 19 seconds left. That took off five seconds there. and It gives the Jaguars a first down. Jaguars right now with one timeout. The Aggies have none. Well, if each of those are five, you can give that up and it won't be in the end zone. Garvin's going to run, and then he'll slide down, and the clock's moving, and now a timeout is used by the Jaguars, so Joey Jones had to use their final timeout. Do you like that decision there no, by Garvin? You're diving in the middle of the field when final charge timeout, time's South not Alabama. your friend. Yeah. This will be a 30-second timeout. Please reset the game clock. Yeah, I don't at all. Seconds, I, I think... Zero, one, two. I think what happens is, is what you saw is that you end up wasting more time running off the clock, picking up four or five yards, Adam, like you were thinking. And it's like throw the ball out of bounds, right? Stop the clock right away. If everyone's covered, do away with it and start again. Instead, you, you spun off um, many too many seconds. 
There's a look back at the touchdown catch by Connor Kramer on the rocket throw by Tyler Rogers that gave the Yankees this lead. Second down and five yards for the Jaguars and no timeouts to work with. Marvin has some time. He completes it. And then it's dropped. Javarius Way had it initially, then he dropped it. He would have been in bounds anyway. There's seven seconds left. Third down, five yards, of course, four down territory for South Alabama. You know, it'd have been nice to get one of those plays for South Alabama where they could get to the end zone and throw it deep, but now they're too far. I mean, they're not far enough where they could do that. So now this is for the Aggies. You want to back up a couple safeties, playing a three-deep three deep coverage that's way deep. Garvin's going for it all. Batted away. Wow. Austin Perkins bats it away. And for the first time in 57 years, New Mexico State will bowl. The Yaggies are victorious. Adam, I cannot believe that. In that last play, he, the receiver was behind the defender too, so it's a good thing you got up there to knock that thing down. Hey, but all of that doesn't matter. What matters right now is... The long wait is over, and look at the fans erupting at them. For weeks, all Doug Martin talked about, Danny, was that next win. They wanted to get the fourth, then the fifth. And then when they got that fifth win last week, he said, let's go get number six. They weren't talking about a bowl game. They were talking about the next game, the next game, each and every week. And guess what, Danny? They got number six. And you know the nice thing is, is it happened on senior night. You got parents that flew in for it. You have a lot of a lot of people here supporting it. The community came out, and it's it's just fantastic. I know there's a lot of people watching from all over. I had former players that played with the the Jim Bradley Jr. down in the Houston area, the Dan Plantses, the Jordan Knees, the everyone, the Cordova, and everyone from all those different years and different eras, they're just erupting right now, and, and I can't wait to join them, one way or the other. You just saw the director of athletics, Mario Mocha in tears. A man who played baseball at this university, he's in the Hall of Fame, hugging Doug Martin, the head football coach. Doug got an extension earlier this year, and boy, that could not have been more deserved. The Yankees will finish the regular season at six wins and six losses, and they will head to a bowl game. They are the fifth bowl eligible team in the Sun Belt. The Arizona Bowl is December 29th. An invitation hasn't come yet, of course. The game just finished, but. If you don't have plans right now on December 29th, or if you do have plans, reverse your plans well, if you're an Aggie fan. Okay, so so one of my sons did buy uh, hotel tickets, and uh, he got some rooms, but he wasn't going to say anything because he was afraid of a jinx. But you know what? I want to call uh, all the knee household and say, boys and wife, here we go. Coach Adam Young, Danny Knee with you. What's going through your mind right now? Well, <laughs> a lot. Just real happy for the seniors. What a great group of kids. Coach, it was Connor Kramer, a guy who was a quarterback last year, who makes that receiving touchdown to win it. Talk about his story, the summer, the switch, and how great of a teammate he is. You know, it kind of epitomizes this whole team. You know, it's been the most unselfish group of kids I've ever been around. Great leaders. Just refused to give in. And... Uh, you know, Connor was one of those guys. When we approached him about that move, he didn't even blink. He just wanted to get on the field and help us win and help change the tradition of a place. And, you know, how about these fans that are here tonight? You know, look at this. And this is what we can look like every Saturday. Coach Danny Nee, I want to tell you as a former player that I want to thank you with all the rest of Aggie Nation, the former players, for completing what you started to take this long corner and you did it. So we are so proud of you, and I want to say thank you. Well, Danny, I appreciate it. I've had a lot of help. we got a great assistant coaching group here. Mario Mocha has been absolutely fantastic for us. 
Hey, we got something special. We just we can keep it going. If everybody get on board, we can keep it going. Coach, one final question for you. When did you feel like it clicked? When did you say, we can do this. We can become bowl eligible. We can succeed here in New Mexico State. Well, I knew last spring that we had a good football team because just their attitude and their character, and the way they fought through everything. And uh, yeah, we never had to coach effort. And uh, they're a special group. I knew then. I didn't know how big we were going to win, but I knew we were going to have a chance. Coach, thank you so much. Enjoy this one with your family right. and your team. Thanks, guys. Wow. An emotional guy. And, you know, you can't, you can't watch and you can't listen to him and not feel that he put his heart and soul into all of this. And you don't think it means anything to the coaching staff. It means everything to those guys. And it's not just them. It's the players. And he's right. The seniors, the rest. And he sees all these fans. And, yeah, Adam, it could be like this every yeah. weekend. We can do this. New Mexico State ends the longest bull drought in college football. Final score here today at Aggie Memorial Stadium our December 2nd, 2017. A day Aggie fans will remember forever. 22-17. We'll wrap things up after this. New Mexico State wins this one. Final score is 22-17. The Aggies are going to head to a bowl game. Six wins. Doug Martin talked about it for weeks. Let's get to six. And the Aggies finally there to become bowl eligible. And they will play in a bowl game here in 2017. A lot of activity to cover following this one. So check out Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, the whole nine yards, nmstatesports.com. We'll have all the post-game reaction following this one tonight. Great to have you with us. And we are so happy you could join us for some history here today, Danny Nee. You played for New Mexico State. You know what it means to wear the crimson and white. And they did something they haven't done in... 57 years they did it here today and the fans are still in the field and and they should be right because yeah. this is the exciting thing this is our university this is it's a it was great to play here i love las cruces so just it's fantastic I, i'm just so happy there's a lot of highlights to get to from this one really wasn't much of a high scoring game here today final score was 22 to 17 uh, but we'll take a look at the highlights Danny, we had no scoring in the first quarter, and this was kind of a defensive battle here today. Yeah, it was a slow start. I mean, we wanted to get out quick and fast, but it didn't happen, and it was slow and lethargic. Here we see Tyler Rogers trying to get the offense going in that first half. Jaleel Scott had a really big day. Some magnificent catches for Jaleel all afternoon. Yeah, Jaleel has done what, he's, what he did since the first game of Arizona State when he started catching those big catches. He did great, the defense stepping up. Mexico State was able to force three turnovers today. That was a recovered fumble by Shema Lomax after a forced fumble by Roy Lopez. And the Yankees were able to march down the field. That call was overturned. Initially, it was incomplete, overturned to a completed pass. And then Rogers connects with Anthony Muse nine yards away. It was 13 to seven Aggies. And that was our halftime score as well because Terrell Hanks was able to get an interception here after a heavy rush by the Yankees. You see Cedric Wilcox trying to drag down the Jaguars quarterback. Eventually, it's a Terrell Hanks interception. Later on in the second half for New Mexico State, Demarcus Owens able to force a turnover with an interception of his own. And this defense, Danny, was great all day. Yeah, the defense did great. They, they um, only let down was at two in the later part of the fourth quarter, but the defense did fantastic like they have all year long. Jordan McRae was able to haul in a 17-yard pass from Cole Garvin. There's the big one that they're going to replay for years. Connor Kramer with the receiving touchdown for New Mexico State. Uh, we're joined right now by Larry Rose the third, a little improv two LR3, <laughs> but what's going through your mind right now alongside your mother? Uh, man. I, I, I'm just lost with thoughts right now. You know, this is uh, what I came here to do, and to finally get it done, man, it's just a dream come true. Hey, Larry Rose, Danny Nee, former player, and I just want to tell you thank you. You know, we've all been waiting a long time for this, and it would put it on your back all year long, well, all four years. So I want to say thank you very much from the rest of the former players. You did a fantastic job, four years. It's great to have you as an Aggie. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, you told me and you told the media in July of 2016, before your junior year, I don't care about how many touchdowns I score, how many points I score. All I want to do is take this team to a bowl game. You did it. Yes, sir. You did it, Larry. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why did you believe you could do it? 
Um, just because of the, the coaching staff we have, uh, the group of guys that uh, I'm teamed up with, um, I, I knew Coach was putting together something special. It was just a matter of time before it came together, and uh, as you see tonight, it finally came together. Hey, Larry, were you a little nervous during the game? I mean, now it's over. It was just a little bit in there a few times. It was like, I don't know. That last drive, that was something. You had some great, uh, great runs. A little nervous? Uh, no, sir, no nerves. It was just more of a... How are we going to make this happen? You know, who's going to make the play? Uh, I think that's what it really came down to is, is which one of us was going to get in the end zone. And uh, I, I had faith in everybody Mama that was around that me. And, and, Mama, uh, there go that man. So, so, <laughs> so uh, I, it was no nerves from my end. You know, I might have been some nerves from other places, but uh, on my end, no nerves. I was just trying to uh, do whatever the team needed me to do to get in that box. Larry, what does Coach Martin mean to you? Oh, man, he means a lot. Uh, if, it, if it wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't be in this position right now. You know, coming out of high school, I didn't have very many uh, Division I a, uh, offers. So without him, I don't even know if I would be a national name right now. What does your mother mean to you, Leah uh, Rose III? My mom, my mom, she means the world to me. She means the world to me. It's great to have this on senior night with your whole family here. I hope you enjoy it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Go enjoy this one, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. What a great young man, the senior from Fairfield, Texas. Let's take a look at the final stats from this one. Uh, the running game didn't do much, Danny. Yeah, you know, we wanted to try to create a, a running game, but it just never got off until right the very end. You know, Larry Rose had some big runs. Huntley had some big runs as well in this last drive, and it made a difference. But it was a passing. It was Tyler. His passing arm really made it come true and uh, had a couple turnovers that really helped, and the big last pass as well that really made it pass possible. Defense was really good again. The defense has been great now for two straight weeks. Last week they only allowed 10 against Idaho, and they only allowed 17 today to South Alabama. Penalties were an issue early, but the Aggies, for the most part, cleaned it up in half, too. Yeah, they, they did, but certainly there was a lot of penalties. 10 is way too many, and that really caused us to start slow and sputter a little bit. But they got that under control. And part of what you have to do in a team is, is get into the game, find the flow. And if there's not a flow, you got to keep fighting until you get that rhythm. And they were able to find that rhythm and finish strong. Some days it's a challenge to pick our Whataburger play of the game. I don't think it's much of a challenge here today. This is a moment that uh, Aggie fans will think about for many years to come. And that's a man that Aggie fans will love for many years to come. Connor Kramer. The quarterback turned wide receiver certainly has to have our Whataburger play of the game here from today as New Mexico State is able to defeat South Alabama. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, so let's watch it right now. How about that? The receiving touchdown from Connor Kramer. That will be an Aggie lure forever, Dan. Connor Kramer, and not only was just an easy catch, but he had to lay out for it. Connor Kramer had great hands. And he's shown that all year long. And there he came back to help Tyler. Tyler had to scramble to find it. Nothing in the pocket. No one's open. He sees Ty uh, Kramer coming across the back of the end zone moving. Great catch. Tyler Rogers engineered a really impressive drive in those final, I guess it was four or five minutes. Right. The Aggies score with 32 seconds left. But that was a drive that he engineered himself. No mistakes. And it results in the Kramer receiving touchdown and, and you know what also Tyler had that uh, first down right so that first down was very important on that drive and so it, it was just you're right the whole drive itself Tyler did a great job the team came together clearly confidence right you heard that from Larry Rose the third like oh, I was confident the whole time so it was just a great job team effort there so now the Aggies will head to a bowl game it looks like December 29th the Nova Arizona Bowl which is in Tucson Arizona they're trying to tear down the goalpost Danny well, you know what? I, you, I, you knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. I even said, I wonder which one they're going to tear down. They're going to give it, they're going to sure try, right? They're going to give it the whole Aggie effort to tear down the goalpost. Tucson, if it's, it's Tucson. It's a short drive, right? It's a short drive. That's right. We'll be there. If it's anywhere else, we'll be there. It's just too long, right? Yeah. The, you know, so we'll be there for sure. So December 29th, it appears, is when the Aggies will play in the postseason in the Arizona Bowl. That formal invitation should come tomorrow. That's when they figure out all this bowl eligibility stuff. But Louisiana lost, so the Aggies are the fifth Sunbelt team uh, to play in the postseason to get to six wins. And that fifth bowl tie-in is the Arizona Bowl. And boy, does it make sense. As the Aggies get number six, what a day to be an Aggie, Danny. Nee. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. So it was fantastic. It was a great call. I, I really appreciated the whole effort, you, the rest of the staff, the players, it, to make it all happen. It was just a great day. So December 29th, mark it down in your calendar and check out nmstatesports.com for full reaction of a big day in Aggie football history. December 2nd, 2017. This one will go down as one of the best 
ever at New Mexico State. We hope you join us for our next telecast, which is going to be next Wednesday, December 6th, when Aggie men's basketball faces off against the University of San Diego. Game coverage starts at 7 p.m. Today's broadcast was a co-production of students and staff at New Mexico State. On behalf of our entire crew and the former Aggie Danny Nee, I'm Adam Young saying thanks for joining us. This telecast is copyrighted by the Regents of New Mexico State. The Aggies win 22-17. The bull drought is over. We say good night from Las Cruces.